hope our other guest shows. Hey, hello. Hey. Welcome to Apex After Dark, everyone. This is uh, Apex and with my co-host, Devil Flyer. Uh, we, our special guest is Kai MFS, if he ever shows up. Oh. <laughs> we'll give us some time to come on. So in the meantime, uh, there's some people still at Lord Crackhead. I've been on there just in the chat. I want to find people for more more viewers. And I've, I've got the uh, notification, put the notification out on Twitter and Instagram. So we'll see how far that goes. I reminded people also, I was on uh, I was on the chat, George Peter Gaddis. Uh, people may show up from there. Who knows? Uh, but hey, it's the lovely Sherry. Hello. Thank you for coming. Thank you for visiting. Hey, hey. All right, so since you're here, uh, now Sherry? where's Carol's Cookies? Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. I just dropped Thank a link you. on Twitter. Ah, good. Thank you for or, being here. Well, not the link, but I yeah. said we were yeah over here going. <laughs> going and going. It helps to so, advertise. Well, while you're here, while we're waiting for Kai, uh, you have your last few hours of Devil Flyer, Ash. Yeah, I believe it. I haven't updated it since uh six hours left but yeah i believe all campaigns end at like 3 a.m i guess yeah so let me go ahead i will uh i'm gonna refresh it well okay let me go and get it out let me go ahead and share do a monitor share stuff Whoa. while we're at it anyway it's easter happy easter everybody Oh, yeah, I guess it is now, huh? Yes, I got to take mom to church. <laughs> two hours left. Two hours left. Two so hours by the time we're done with this thing. show, oh my by gosh. the time we're done with this show, we'll, we'll be ended probably. We'll be, maybe. We'll maybe. see how that goes. Yeah, we'll All see. All right. Here we go. Now we are. The mystery. To get back. We are, we are. And there's okay. the link to it right there. I'm going to drop in the go. chat the to the campaign. Let's go ahead and show it. Here we go. It's now $630, 35 backers, two hours left. Let's go ahead and we shall play the video. While you set that up, I'm going to. Get the link to my YouTube. Yes, on Indiegogo, everyone, go ahead and back that, if you will, please. And I would like to introduce a great guest that we have. Uh, we've kind of ran into each other on John Talks and Nina Infinity. Here's, here's Kai, Kai MFS. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Hey there, how's it going? Sorry, I'm a little bit late. I forgot I'd unplugged my microphone and, and undone everything here <laughs> earlier. So... Uh, yeah. Hey, good to it's, see you guys. That's it's an honor to, uh, to have you. you. Now, you and I have actually ran into the chat with John Tox. Remember, he was uh, streaming live a few mm -hmm. years back. And Nina Infinity. So, finally, get to meet you. And, yeah, uh, man. It's uh, I actually started doing a late night show because I missed that chat and uh, on John Tox. I remember when, uh, what's it called? Hello, ladies. Hello, ladies. <laughs> Look at when, ladies. Uh, they're like an old Kai here. All right. <laughs> <laughs> It was just a couple of people. Hey, Devil Flyer, nice to meet you. Yeah, nice uh, to meet you. Yeah, yeah. I remember there was just a dozen people in the beginning when John Talks started doing that regularly, and then when the lockdowns hit, more people were hanging out there. But I really missed everybody in that chat, so I just started I doing too. a late night so I could hang out with uh, uh, any late nighters that are up. Yeah, uh -oh, and, and I see more and more the trend being more and more, you know, people going all night or a large portion of the night in CG. Yeah, man. On a lot of oh, shows. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> I think Captain it's... Cockney Spock. Thank you for being here, Captain. Yeah. Yeah, I think so... the trend was, you know, earlier that everybody would kind of stream in the afternoon in the prime time hours and stuff. But I'm seeing a lot more, and I'm on a lot of light night 
stream. So I'm yeah. speaking from experience. So uh, used to, you wouldn't see anything like that. Now no. I see several. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Oh, we got five people here. That's awesome, man. <laughs> cool. It's like late night TV kind of sucks. Might as well go late night yeah. YouTube to make it better. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Devil. There was uh, there was like hardly any late night stuff uh, before, and it felt like uh, like I remember Jedi Bill would do the Insomniac suit, but he was kind of getting the feel for things. I was also kind of getting a feel for what I wanted to do. But uh, I'm always up late, and once John Talk start, stopped doing his stream, there was nowhere really that had the same, um, the same energy, the same crowd, and so uh, I thought I'd fill, try to fill that void a little bit. Yeah, I'm glad you do, man. Yeah, I've heard um, from, from a source that uh, you know some some good information on NFTs. They say, "I want you to ask Kai of MF MFS." I went, "Yeah, I've run to him in a few chats and stuff." So anyway. You've worked on M uh, NFTs before, I believe, and uh, people are actually like to be informed on what it is and actually how you make money at something like that. So, uh, how did you how did you um, how did you uh, find out about NFTs and how did you work it within your uh, system of of I guess making money on it? Um, my project is kind of on pause because I had a big move that oh, okay. set me back, and I like everything in my life got set back and then for the first two weeks i didn't even have internet and oh, no. then um like you know my free like my freelance phobia everything i feel behind on everything so i finally can and then i've been having um let's just summarize it summarize it up as health issues that have been kind of making it hard to to do oh, certain sorry. things wow and it's like it's nothing serious it's just um it slows me down and I uh so i gotta try to um now that i've got a couple projects done and out of the way i i want to try to I need to double up, double down on that project, but I'd really like a social media person to help me because I'm terrible with social media. If I could just make the thing and then, and then let them do the promotional stuff, then I would be happy. <laughs> okay. Well, good. But, um, Oh, got a frozen, but sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Maybe you get his internet uh, going right here. May kind of refresh. Uh, you want to go ahead and pop out, Kai, and I'll pop you back in. If you want to do that, if you can still hear me. Maybe that'll help. Maybe that'll help. Let yeah. me go ahead and, yeah. Okay, let me go ahead and move you right now and go ahead and come back in, if you would. You're kind of freezing up there. Okay, then I'm going to move you and then come back in, okay? Can you hear me? Okay, there we go. All right. Okay, add to stream. There he is. Uh, oh. We oh, hope. Okay. We hope. Okay. He went uh, to the dark side. God What's up it. with that? I don't know, man. He's a Sith Lord. How do you... Yeah, I don't... Uh, okay, I'm trying to add him. Uh, how do you add him? Oh, God dang it. <laughs> Sorry, folks. You know, sometimes this does happen. Technical um, difficulties. Technical beyond our controls, please stand by. It could be the weather. We've had some weather here the last few dang. days. Yeah, we were talking about that high winds and somebody oh. had asked me, you know, have you had weather like that? And I was like, yeah, we've had like winds and then it rains yeah. and then wind again, you know, we'll help dry it out. But then it rains again. Oh, man, so no kidding. It's oh. muddy and then it's not. And then it's muddy okay. and it's not. Yeah. Today yeah, was right. nice, though. Yeah. yeah, right. He's broken. Oh, no, Carol's cookie says. <laughs> Come back in. Okay, I know if I don't come back in, so he's going to come back in. Once we there he is. There he goes. <laughs> hey, Sorry about that. Yeah, my, right. speaking of not having internet. <laughs> oh um, man. But I like my, my project's kind of been on pause though because of the movie okay. stuff. So long story. I like your background. That. It's it's kind of like uh Sorry. the Tonight Show with Johnny yeah. Carson in the back. <laughs> With the awesome. city skype, you take yeah. over the studio, didn't you? Thank you. That's a great. That's a great compliment, Johnny Carson specifically. That feels good. Oh yeah, man. So yeah, it was very much the look I was going for. So like in the beginning, I had like a sci-fi city, but I didn't really like it. It felt grungy, and yeah. uh, so I put this together. And, uh, that's yeah, awesome. Good. I, I like it. It's yeah. really cool. So have you? Uh, I guess have you not actually? Um, have you made NFTs before? Are you just getting started or what? Yeah, I have. I I was doing one every day, um, 
but it takes a lot of time. And then after, after making it, then I take, it takes a lot of time to do the, all the social stuff that I needed to do, which okay. is why I needed to try to split it up. Um, right. But I haven't found anyone uh, to help me on that end. Uh, oh, but okay. essentially um, I saw when I was, expo- uh, we, I used to do a weekly uh, video game, like in gaming talk show with culture casino and Angelus and runner. Yeah. And we kind of put that on, on hiatus because we're all too busy for it right now and all our schedules changed. Right. So, um, but in one of those shows, I found, we found this NFT article and it was talking about a game that used NFTs to sell little pieces of property in the game. And I was like, what, what is an NFT? What is this? And then when I went and looked it up and I saw this shitty pixel art, I said, what the hell? This is selling for how much? What? <laughs> fuck this no no i object i make better i have no 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 fuck this and so i started making (laughs) i started making stuff but um but yeah that's pretty much how it all started (laughs) so so nfts really don't have an expiration date do they i mean it's like uh, a piece of artwork right that uh, is very very limited like a limited Uh, number and people can buy that or invest so in its current incarnation, let's say, yeah, it's pretty much an authenticated work of art, which is why collectors love it. Because every one that you get is authenticated. This was made by this person. It's from this collection. This is the official. This is the one. Yeah. And uh, and that then uses there's like blockchain uh, technology, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. So you can tell who's bought it, who's purchased it, how many times it's been, it's traded hands and for how much. Uh, it's all there. And so collectors love it. Yeah. Oh, yeah cool. So, so really, I mean, yeah, you, you work on the PR part, like you said, kind of like us making comic books. Uh, you know, there's a lot to it, to, to making sequential art. You know, you have to have a writer, an artist, a, you know, colorist, perhaps, you know, just different people for different jobs. Just like you're talking about, let somebody handle that and you do the art. And the reason I put it was like, uh, expiration date was you could really in your downtime or whatever work on that on a portfolio right i mean it's like oh i created that two years ago it's still going to be fresh isn't it yeah if you make nfts and a collection or you make collections of whatever and then five years from now you get really popular and famous now all of a sudden all of that art that you sold or didn't sell is worth much more than it was And so everyone's like, I have one of the things that he made years ago that he doesn't even do these anymore. He's off doing some other shit. And so the value increases with your value, you know, socially, the way you're looked at. So if you also, let's say you get really famous and your stuff goes up in value and then you get caught with like a basement full of, um, full of, you know, women, then, (laughs) then (laughs) they go, Oh, this guy's going to jail and he's, you know, shamed and whatever. Then, now all of a sudden, maybe nobody wants your art anymore, and then the right. value goes down. <laughs> Sounds like a great plot for a movie. Uh, like it, yeah, movies. it could definitely be a part of it, like John Waters or something. Yeah, directed. because you're you're you kind of got reality and then virtual reality. And they're meeting somewhere. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and the lines kind of blurred. Where exactly does that fall? Yeah. Well, th- I love that you said it like that, Devil uh, Devil Flyer, because that's exactly what NFTs are. I think people get too caught up in the Oh, it's just a piece of art with like a name attached to it. But it is the convergence of digital in the real world. So it allows for like some years ago, I don't know how much what video games you guys play, but some years ago, Blizzard tried to do like a real life auction house where you can auction off digital items for real money. Oh. It didn't work. Didn't work at all. But NFTs allow you to do that now. And it it's a real, you know, convergence of the two. And, and, so and let's face it, see- some things are developed too early and it's they're ahead of their time. And and then some things just might be unpopular, yeah. like you say, you know, at the time. Well, it's the idea was ahead of its time, but now mm-hmm. we have the technology to make that idea real. Make the execution of it. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's- <laughs> Sometimes that's all that's missing. People go, that's a great idea, but it doesn't work. Well, it doesn't work because maybe there's a piece missing and NFTs mm-hmm. are that little piece. It's just that it's in the it's in its baby stages right now. So as the years progress, we'll see them evolve and become a lot more 
than what they are now. What when you project yourself down ten years down the road, let's say fifteen years down the road, how do you see uh, what you're dealing in? You're mixing your, you know, hands in the paint and or the clay or whatever. What you're molding? How do you see that evolving and changing in the future? You don't know? Does anybody <laughs> guess? Anybody <laughs> guess? It'll yeah, still it be about the I, artist, will it not? That I'm, creates I'm the thinking, thing? I mean, like, I'm kind of like Jack Sparrow. Like, I don't really have a plan, but mm -hmm. like, I have an idea. So I don't know where I'm going to be in 10 years. I don't know when I'm going to, where my energy, my focus, my passion is going to be. Um, maybe I, I'm, you know, let's say I'm in politics and whatever. And I'm bringing NFTs into society, and everyone gets their own, you know, NFT that has a certain whatever, you know, value. A virtual to it. political button. <laughs> yeah, I like that frog yeah. character. What was that frog character's name? Uh, or imagine uh, membership cards. Yeah. You have like a membership card to a thing, and you accumulate all these points. You're like, I hate this place. It sucks, but I have all these points. Uh, can I sell this to someone? And they go, Yeah, I'll take it. And then. Now you have, you know, value in the things like that that you accumulate instead of just going, I'm just going to throw this away. When you were saying digital re real estate, almost like on a monopoly game or something, uh, I was thinking about they're kind of doing that with a great high grade key comics. Now, you know, they're not selling the comic. You can invest in this, you know, for a portion, a share of the value of the book, which I thought you know, it's pretty wild concept at first, but it's like becoming amazing, more prevalent. Like amazing fans. Where people just 15. buy a piece of it. Yeah. Of a key book. Say an action comics number one. Right. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's pretty wild. It's, it, that's that, yeah, that's the other thing about it is this the value is a little bit subjective. At this, like for me personally, I don't see the value in like that or in certain other projects, but other people see tremendous value in it. So it's uh yeah, that's something to keep in mind. Just because you, you think something's good or bad doesn't mean that everyone else will. That's true. Well, I think I, the NSTs could actually give a chance for artists who are starving and trying to actually find something to make something of themselves. If their comic fails or some particular uh, fine art fails, maybe something in their portfolio can actually stand out and actually... And people can mm -hmm. actually look at it and say, well, what's some certain value about this piece that the artist probably never have seen, but yet I found value in it. And they can look at that. You pay process an NFT and who knows if that sell or might not. I guess it's like shooting a fish in a barrel. <laughs> See if you can actually find that, that work of well, art. Some things, there's this one kid and I say kid, he's like 20, 21 maybe, but this I, guy, uh, I think he's like 19 or 20. I, when he was 16 or 17, he started taking pictures of himself every day. He'd take a selfie every day. Mm. And then when the NFT thing happened, he's like, I'm going to put all my selfies up as NFTs as a joke because he didn't take NFT seriously. And right. so he just put it up because he thought it was funny. And then some people purchased some, which he thought was weird. He's like, I can't believe people are buying some of these. And then like a really famous chef, like a really famous NFT person, caught wind of his project hmm. and they they bought some and then like tweeted it out like hey look at this guy and he was in his head he was like maybe i'll do one of those time lapse videos when i'm done like after five years or something but then his nfts just went Poof, they are super popular in that region in like southeast asia oh wow. and he was uh afraid to tell his mom about uh, of that he had all this money now because she was going to be suspicious of where he got it from. <laughs> I'll tell you. Wow. Like, Honey, are you doing drugs? Are you selling drugs? So, so were they like enhanced? Uh, <laughs> is it all digital art or it was just photographs? It was just his selfies taken from his phone. Just okay. selfie. So, every day. so it doesn't necessarily have to be like you're, you're, you're writing code for anything or that you actually even had to be a digital artist. Is that correct? Yeah, you don't necessarily. You can be a photographer. You can um, you can make physical art, take pictures of it, and put it up as an NFT. Some people uh, send their physical art to the person that buys the NFT. There's um, it's it's you kind of got to figure out how to stand out. So yeah, but it's also pushing the boundaries of what is 
uh, the aesthetic of art, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What What do you consider art? Yeah, you know that that could be like tramp art, hobo art, to very folk art, to to something very sophisticated. Correct? It could be yeah, it's just it's anything. Also... What your your vision of it is and getting it out there. Now, how popular it is, I guess the the market's going to. Uh, but he he, you're saying he flared up after this more famous person bought some of his and brought even more attention to it. Yeah. Yeah. Like people will randomly buy things sometimes, but, uh, but yeah, that one was, uh, he just exploded and wasn't expecting it. Well, that's pretty much paid for his college. Yeah. That's awesome. So, so do you do digital art? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, d where did you, or how long have you been doing that? Where did you learn that? Uh, I've been drawing my whole life yeah. and then I went in. So junior, senior year of high school, I took some Photoshop and illustrator classes and then I went to art school uh, for college. And so then I've been a graphic designer and animator. Um, I've worked in games and uh, advertising, entertainment, etc. And you're a gamer yourself, of course. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's just it's for me, it's just a casual part of of my life. I always need a little art for this or that. Or uh, if I was doing ads for a company, I would, you know, just put it together. And so it's it's kind of second nature to me. Well, for myself, I've only known of, even known of the concept of NFTs. I mean, I might have grazed something here or there and didn't recognize it for what it was. But till I got on Twitter and then I'm seeing this dramatic you know digital art sometimes move and flow and and just different things that, and then these monkeys of course you know uh the famous <laughs> monkeys that i see everywhere uh and i i had not heard or even knew what an nft was till a couple months ago i'd heard of blockchain and other yeah. digital currency like bitcoin but you know yeah. for the most part i was ignorant of nfts and what what they were and and not an expert on it by now by any means but at least i have formatting some kind of grasp of what it entails and what it's about yeah i first heard of nfts through i think mike s miller he i don't know if you've heard of him or not but he's a comic book artist who used to draw for dc and image comics and i guess maybe maybe marvel but he uh came up with uh different designs of monkeys and uh he had some success and he had, you know, a little bit of failure because this one company you have to really look out for was going to promote him. And they ended up ripping him off. And it's like, ah, oh, that's sometimes you got to really watch who you're dealing with and screen the people that you're dealing with. Make sure you know them. Hopefully they're not have any sort of evil intent toward you mm -hmm. and ripping you off, that sort of thing. So I think, uh, yeah, definitely got to screen people, make sure they're cool. <laughs> I hope. I hope you're, uh, the, the people you're finding to promote your NFTs, these for social media are pretty legit. Uh, we'll hope. Well, I'm that. the one that pays them, so yeah. <laughs> they're hoping I'm legit. Yeah, uh, yeah there you go. Uh, <laughs> how would you describe your NFTs? Well, the project that I was doing that I need to get back on, that I'm looking for someone to, to help with my social media side of it, is called NF Truman. And it's uh, supposed to be like the Truman Show, where he lives every day of his life throughout this year. And oh, so okay. he started off as a baby, and now he's a kid. No, he's a youth now. So he's between like nine and... I left him off at nine. He just had his birthday. Not nine exactly, but youth is the age. So approximately nine in human years. Mm -hmm. um, and But I have, I need to go and do more of... of of that uh but he's essentially like once i'm done he'll be dead <laughs> yeah so it's just evolving wow. a lifetime a virtual lifetime here yeah there's no yeah. escaping this world unlike the truman show there's like it's based on the truman show so in the truman show he escapes but there is no escape for nf truman is it is it character. nice i know in like savage dragon it's in real time so if 10 years pass in real time then his characters have aged 10 years but oh, wow. most comics like Superman, he's been around for like 85, 90 years. Uh, he's still youthful, right? He never ages, really. It's like his 30s. Things yeah. might change, but like Pete, 
like Spider-Man, he may go to high school and then he goes to college and then he gets married, but he's still fairly young considering yeah. that he's been around for 50 years or more. Yeah. But yeah, uh, d- does yours happen in real time or, or is it slow time or what? It's supposed to be one year for us is his entire lifetime. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, his entire lifetime within a year. Just okay. one year. It could be a hundred. <laughs> yeah. So well, have, you re- have you, re- are you just developing this or are you have you released a few? No, I was doing it one a day until I had to move and then I couldn't. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I haven't right. been able to get back to it because I've had one thing or another to catch up on or do or right or et cetera, or, well, you know, preventing me sometimes uh, it's, it's like, I'll have my goals set. Okay. Tomorrow I'm doing these things. And then something comes up that I have to do that day. Well, right. it, I'm it sure some people have contacted you. Day. Hey, when are we, you know, what kind of feedback have you gotten people since you've like been it. down? People like it and, and have asked uh, about it, but I, I, I posted an update that I've been, I need to post another update. Uh, that I haven't been able to to get to it, but um, uh, mostly I've just been focused on trying to find someone to help me with the social media side of it, so I can focus on making it. Yeah. But um, I think I might just start making them, and then not even worry about posting anything. Right. <laughs> just like just make them and put them up, and make it and put it up. I think I might just have to do that, and then not give a shit about yeah. promotion or anything. Just like that kid that makes his selfies. He didn't really know <laughs> what's going on. That could be a stroke of that's luck true. like it happened to him. And that's good. Not to really expect it. Just kind of make it a surprise. Okay, that's the beauty of it. It's like, do, oh, do you consider yeah. yourself an artist? Yeah. I've yeah. been an artist my whole I, life. I, I would say, okay. yeah. I, well, I'm just saying, you know, an artist never really stops his work even when life problems, you know, that's there's true. always oh. something going on. You know what I've I'm been saying? Making- I've been making other art. Yeah. It's just okay. that, like I was talking about other projects and freelance and things that I had going on that I had to catch up on and delay and et cetera. What's sure. your um, speciality? What do you like to work in? Acrylics, oils, uh, sculpt? What do you do besides <laughs> NFTs? Uh, 3D, Draw? 3D rigging and animation. Okay. Uh, graphic design, illustration, writing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, websites. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty versatile digitally. Mm-hmm. Oh, great, man. Yeah, I need to actually get a website. I'm at the, uh, I'm at the, would meant to talk about that. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you need a website, I got you. I, I use WordPress. Um, if you okay. want one that you can, like, is he manage uh, more? I mean, we, yeah, we could, we could talk about that. Is, awesome. that. is that where you own your own domain on the website? Uh, yeah, but I like more custom. Yeah. stuff than right. what Customized. you usually get with some of these pre-builds uh-huh. right and but uh, at the end yeah i mean it's not a pre-build you'll own the domain to it right is that right oh yeah yeah i mean everyone yeah. should you should own the get you have a domain for your website instead of being like uh, yeah Apex i agree that wordpress you know yeah, <laughs> right yeah right <laughs> yeah and hosting of course that comes with it then you have mm-hmm. really total control over it do you not mm-hmm. yeah you own it well, yeah. What I like about WordPress is you can add functionality, pretty much any functionality that you need or want. You can have a member section. Well, I guess some of this stuff is becoming more available on Wix and Weebly and uh, Squarespace yeah. and stuff. So, okay. whereas it wasn't before, it wasn't even an option, but now now it is. So, yeah, oh, really cool. I have yeah, to. I mean, over the process of time, uh, things are kind of demanded, and the uh, people fill those gaps, aren't they? I mean, it kind of spreads out after it's established after a while. Mm-hmm new options appear yeah yeah and and not just in that but other things and i i think that's kind of what's going to happen to nfts you know things are going to be that weren't available five years ago are going to be available you know yeah especially as the functionality improves yeah you're going to be able to do more yeah that's true i mean uh i'm thinking there's been some uh people who've uh made these nfts and somehow uh may like 400,000 to, to even more. Uh, how do they make that much money? Is it just more exposure through social media or how? Or what do you think? I don't know, man. I don't make that much money. I couldn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so well, you're if, honest. That's good. So <laughs> where do you see the state of the NFTs now? Let's, let's equate it to your character. Okay. From infancy being born to death. 
Is he nine? Is he adult? Where where are NFTs? Just in its infancy? NFTs now, are or? babies right now. NFTs okay. are in their baby stage. So okay. they're not even young child, huh? No. Yeah. Right A lot more the... to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's literally in the last couple of years it started. Oh, okay. So it's a relatively new thing in the last two years. Yeah. Hey, good I stuff. I, I'm scared. I think I learned about it in, uh, hey, good stuff, in uh, 2020 uh-huh. was when I learned about it. And it had it was only maybe a year old at that point. Yeah. And, and, and how did this develop? Do you know? Do you know the history, the early history of it? Jeremy, I'm really picking your brain tonight. No, I don't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, I don't know yeah. how they started. Uh, I know about when they started. Okay, I think Ethereum was the first blockchain to offer the finality. Essentially, there was um, with the the cryptocurrencies were first, and then Ethereum, the Ethereum currency, um. And it created the functionality to attach information to a blockchain in the way that we now have the NFTs. And that's what kicked off the whole the whole mm-hmm. thing. Well, do you look at it like uh, online streaming? Because that's that's been, you know, I see that as like maybe the wars for that are over with, you know, and the big ones have won out. But it's still about uh, three things, content, content, content. Yeah. Um, you know, does like Paramount has, you know, its properties like Star Trek and things, you know, for online streaming, but it's still, it's still, they clamor for content. It seems like. Um, yeah, it kind of, your content is the most important. Um, whatever your project is, it's, it's what you're making. If people like what you're making and if they like you as a person. Yeah. And that's what it's really about. Awesome. Uh, sounds like cool. a lot of hubris. <laughs> sounds yeah. like a lot of yeah. you know, it's they all, got the, well, they have they have to like me or I'll go nowhere. Well, so it's, 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 it's as much it's, about in a way it's like politics, you about know. About a personality, kind of like yeah. the Salvador Dali back in the day, you know, the surrealist. <laughs> that's how not sell like that spoon, you know. That yeah. that's the thing. You can't sell like a false image of yourself. You just gotta be yourself and hope people like you. Like if they don't, oh well, that's I guess I'm I'm just doing what i'm doing generally someone out there is gonna like gonna like what you bring to the table but Mm -hmm. um but really it's a a, you know i I got some good advice some years ago when i was uh in my early 20s about uh kind of how how to behave and how to act if you just act authentically and and be yourself you will draw closer people to you that like that and you will push away people that don't and so it's best to just always be honest. And that's kind of, I think that's the, a good advice too for with NFTs when you're presenting yourself online. If you make a false image of yourself, if you present a false image of yourself and then people find out, hey, this guy's actually an asshole, then um, it might not last. And there's your Easter message. Thank you, folks, for tuning in. <laughs> yes. Don't be an asshole. There you go. <laughs> Yes, do unto others as they would do unto you. In mm-hmm. a way, the golden rule does work. Eventually, you'll profit in, in a good life. There you go. As I right. like um, something that's a little bit off, not off topic, but about like with NFTs and cryptocurrency, with all this being like a new space and a new thing and people are jumping into it. Uh, what I've noticed over time when there's big tech um, explosions and upgrades People emulate the biggest person in the room, the biggest person in the space. So there was a while where tech startups and whatnot were imitating Bill Gates. They're like, I'm going to do like Bill Gates did. I'm going to do like, you know, like this and like that. And then when it was Steve Jobs, people wearing turtlenecks and people like doing the Steve Jobs style thing. And so people like emulate these, these people's behaviors. And right now, the biggest person we've got in the space, the biggest voice in the room is Gary V and Gary Vanderchuk. And he espouses um, appreciate appreciating things, appreciating people, uh, be, gratitude, kindness. And I'm seeing that proliferate through the space where people are about that, those ideals. And uh, a lot of the videos you see people walk up to him and say, Hey, thank you so much. You changed my life. And I did, I, you know, I was there now I'm here and I've done this to pay it forward to other people. 
And I, I really love that about this particular shift in technology. Oh, yeah, man. It's, that's, that's pretty cool. If, uh, it's good to follow someone who, you know, it could be a good influence, a positive influence. And mm-hmm. people can actually rub in on it better themselves and have a good guide map, perhaps, to uh, to do their work, I guess. All right. Very cool. So uh, I guess for now, uh, what do you suggest? You suggest people make their own art and then set it aside and then get with a social presence, get someone who you can promote uh, through social media? I would recommend putting together a team okay. because it's, it's, it's tough uh, doing it alone. It's really uh-huh. tough. Okay. How many people do you think could be on a team? What, what certain roles do they play? Uh, I would look at other projects, uh, particularly the successful projects, to see what they've got. Usually you've got like somebody running, somebody that makes – well, also usually you don't have one person that can do everything in terms of skills. <sighs> but um, someone that, let's say, runs the website, uh, someone that runs the social media, mm-hmm. someone that manages the Discord in the community, okay. uh, somebody that makes the art or a couple people, you know, programmer if you've got a more complicated – more in-depth kind of a project. Um, there are different ways of, of going about it, and it really depends on which platform you choose and what your approach is. Okay. So I would suggest possibly about four people on the team, roughly. Yeah, I'd say between three and five. Three and five, yeah. Okay. It sounds two, like two at a minimum. I'm looking in, for number two. In other two, business, two to five. Yeah. I know they're kind of running toward the Asian market. In comics, there it's manga, you know? Mm. Uh, is more popular than the American brand. Uh, do you see NFTs kind of trying to uh, gravitate towards the Asian market? Not necessarily. No. It's a global thing. Mm. So your stuff might become really popular on the other side of the planet. Mm. And then you'll just have a bunch of, let's say, um, Mongolians. Like Mongolia just loves your pro- your NFTs. And then it just becomes really popular. Some famous Mongolian guys like, I love this shit. And, and you all your NFTs sell. And now they're really valuable because of Mongolia. But mm-hmm. then people around the world will see that your, your project is picked up and there's more interest. And so then it, it has, it should, I mean, theoretically have a positive uh, feedback loop there. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's like anything else. It takes work. It takes focus so, and passion. And, so unlike physical yeah. artwork, like I own a physical painting of Picasso and I can sell that to you. Uh, it's sort of virtual, right? You can still sell those to other people down the road, right? If you want to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can sell your, you can sell the, uh, what's it called? You can resell your NFT to someone else for, more than you bought it for and make a profit you can also can there's you different sell it for a loss yeah you can i know you don't want to you but... want to get rid of it yeah, right. uh-huh. <laughs> but the um uh what's it called um i spaced out never mind i lost it it's gone <laughs> <laughs> hey, it'll come back to you i'm sure yeah uh, hopefully yeah no kidding Ah, uh, so yeah. uh yeah I've, yeah, I guess it's a, it's still, it's in its infancy. It's still, people are still working with it. Some people have actually succeeded by weird luck. And some people, some people I believe are still in the process of getting it, the NFT together, the processing, the social media, the promoting, I guess. Yeah. It's all just a stage, I believe, until you get a certain amount of a uh, profit. And, and you're mm-hmm. so I know you're all in on it and developing yours and have been putting it out there. So you, you think that this isn't like a fad. You think this is going to stick around for a while. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's going to evolve from what it is now. There is I do agree with Gary V when he talks about how there's going to be essentially a crash in the market where a lot of projects are going to lose their value and just be worthless. Um, but certain projects will stick out for one reason or another, and they will stand the test of time. And uh-huh. then there will be an art market in the future. But uh-huh. um, on those but yeah. that are worthless, what, what does it not have for sustainability uh, in your mind? Intrinsic value, I would say. 
Yeah. yeah. So, something if there's very... no if it doesn't have if it doesn't leave a footprint in history mm -hmm. in some way, mm -hmm. then it's gonna I, I think it's gonna disappear. Well the you know, That's the way me. I look at it, and I know you've studied art history probably, right? Um mm -hmm. uh it's you know the the thing you want to achieve with any work is sort of a universal or global you know we'd use global now but universal appeal to people like the mona lisa has you know arguably universal appeal for many different reasons not just the image but who the man was the life he lived the other things he did in his life so it's all a culmination isn't it of a, of yeah, a person's kind of. life yeah there's because there's like um let's say for example there's this one as it uh genesis kong's was mm -hmm. the collection that uh generated banana coin a banana coin is a is a cryptocurrency oh. and it was i do know a little history behind that one it was some eastern european guys who wanted to create a cryptocurrency to fund planting banana farms i don't remember where in the world but they had a whole banana farm idea and they're like let's use cryptocurrency to make banana farms and so uh long story short it didn't quite work out but <laughs> the coin was made and it was just sitting there and so and it had like almost no value and so these guys made their nft made so that each one in their collection generates banana coins every day hmm. and so as the the value of these people started buying these these nfts that every day generate coins for you and eventually once the value of the nfts and the coins had gone up this nft just sitting in your wallet was generating 600 dollars a day automatically oh. Oh, and so crazy. right that's the kind of thing that'll that like will make a project blow up for sure and also give it long-term value because it has it's now a piece of history it, so it it's something unique it's passive income. It's passive it's, income. It's, but it's, it's something that years. works for you, whether you go to work, you're asleep, or you're. Mm -hmm. It's. Oh, I like that. Yeah. But Heck even even it. once it's not generating coins anymore, like twenty years from now, it says, "Hey, this is I have one of those original ones that did the thing from before the big crash and stuff, and it's still, you know, and so it has an intrinsic value beyond even past its its mm -hmm. useful lifespan." Wow. <clears throat> kind of so, a nostalgic bit of NFT history there. Mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. Kind of like uh, uh, Apex on all this, uh, unit, pre Unity Valiant, <laughs> you yeah, know, where yeah. they were very limited in number. Mm -hmm. And then after the Unity story, they were like very plentiful and they're not yeah. as valuable. It was no. the early stuff that was very limited. That <laughs> That's true. You know, yeah. That's mm -hmm. something people have gone crazy, you know, like over publishing things. And I remember like the, the mid nineties, like they put out too many books. They go, Oh, I could sit on this and make a billion dollars. And I could take, you know, I could afford my kids education, this and that. And yeah. It's too many. Once you have too many, it's, it, it's overdone yeah so this gary v where where have you heard of gary v i've never heard of him do is he a, an engineer or is he a promoter or who is gary v having a little throat problem sorry about that that's okay um i've been i've been i've had a cold for a few days now and so uh, if i suddenly go off camera and off and i mute i'm oh. sneezing <laughs> <laughs> okay well god bless you <laughs> thank you um so gary v uh started off working at his dad's wine store and he was the, in charge of like promotions and stuff and so he did really well there he invested in like twitter and i think in the early days and some other stuff his investments paid off well and then he's kind of been at the forefront of this whole movement. He's kind of like he's he's essentially a personality. Like he's um uh he get, he he kind of he pays a guy to follow him around with a camera to his interviews as in his day to day and etc. And then uploads those clips to on to the internet. Um, he's very positive, very motivational. He has great uh, advice, but um uh. Essentially, he's he has a track record for calling things before they happen, 
He says, this is going to blow up. This company is going to blow up. This technology is going to gonna do well. This is going to end every single time pretty much he's been right. And awesome. so. Uh, so you pay your paparazzi to record you. <laughs> that's an idea. Yeah, right. he has, yeah, he has his own paparazzi guy. He's like, it's just I just need the one. Follow me everywhere, bro. <laughs> yeah, do as I do. <laughs> but um, but yeah, if if you want to check out Gary V and see what what he's got going on, he's uh, you'll you'll understand the um, the magnetism behind him because a lot of people try to say that he got lucky or that he this and then he says i i didn't get lucky i'm looking at what people are doing i'm watching i'm looking at who's involved i'm looking at the potential of these technologies of these companies i'm seeing what it's providing for people and uh, that's his focus is is what people get out of things i find no matter how successful you are you're always going to have some dist- distractors d- detractors rather yeah yeah and they're always going to be talking smack against you uh, where, what, what's the end game for you? What, what would you like to achieve? Let's say you've, you know, t- 10 years down the road. Wow. Everything's going great. I mean, I don't know how you measure success. You know, if you sold a half million dollars worth or, you know, uh, uh, you know, $24 million worth, how does that change your life? Let's say you have another want in the world. What would you be doing? Would it be your, your art? I, I want to be able to write. Uh, my novel is full time without having to worry about anything else. Okay, oh, I get that's, it. that's my goal. Um, as for the art that I do, the projects that I take on, etc., it's I follow my uh, strong. When I have a strong feeling to do something, I follow that. I see that your NFTs got a narrative, so you've really worked your writing into that, haven't you? I'm gonna have to. I have a little bit, but I'm gonna have to more so now that he's getting older. Oh, he, he's yeah. been a kid. Oh, now wow. he's gonna have friends and shit. He's gonna tra- be traveling <laughs> as an adult. Some how, how much of yeah. you is in that character? Because we really talk, we really write from our life experiences. Oh, he likes soccer. <laughs> Do you yeah. like soccer? Hell yeah. I grew up playing uh, soccer. Okay. I, I come from a soccer family. Well, we oh, tend yeah. to write what we know, right? It's kind of hard and difficult to write so- about a subject that we don't know unless we research it, right? I could have had him playing anything. Uh, cause I've only shown, you know, him, it's like you have the ball in the the scene, you have him doing, playing with it or whatever. Then, uh, but like with soccer, I have, I can do stuff like he kicks the ball into his own face by accident and (laughs) like things like that. But I just, I like soccer and I, I like to promote soccer as a sport. My nephew plays soccer now, which I'm super excited about. Cause as a kid, I would play soccer with him and, uh, So, but you know, we didn't know what sport he was going to be drawn towards, and as he got older, he he liked soccer. So, so you've yeah. invented Charlie Brown. Now you need a Linus and a and all the other characters, right? To become yeah, friends. That's the next step. Part of his life. Yeah. That sounds yeah. pretty. Uh, that sounds cool. Yeah. That I'm thinking. Like, yeah. I, I'm just going to start doing that stuff because I I uh, I can't be delaying it anymore. I'm already like a month and a half delayed oh. on his life story yeah yeah time's ticking <laughs> i think i would i think i would i would work that to my advantage and i would that that lost time i would come up with some kind of narrative you know for for that i don't know to to explain that missing time that could be a know. pandemic just the thought just the thought that's gonna be hard i'll i'll yeah okay. i'll mull it over but yeah, I think over. I'm just gonna have to crack down on it. <laughs> I hear you. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah, deadlines and stuff. It's yeah, kind of like a it. portfolio, huh? Mm. Well, when you're not doing your NFTs, what what do you do? I mean, you know, as a quote job or living to sustain oh. yourself. Uh, I'm a freelance artist. Yeah, uh-huh. like I've worked in I've worked in video games and stuff, but uh, because I wanted to focus on my own projects and stuff, I'm a freelance artist. I have mm-hmm. some. Uh, e-shops i'm working with people to promote those and split the the income from it and uh i'm just right now i'm working on becoming uh, independent while not having to trade my time for money right i get it right yeah yeah there's a lot of money in that gaming stuff if you're if you're established pretty good huh yeah yeah i could i could have a like i could go back to my career but i uh yeah you want to get off the clock out of my day i wouldn't be able to write my novels anymore 
Yeah. If I did that. Yeah. You kind of want to be your own boss then. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think most people do. They want to get to that point where they can structure their own day, own day that benefits them the most and makes the most of their time. Yeah. Yeah. And I have the skills to do that. I just need, uh, I just, I just needed to acknowledge that I needed help to achieve that. And so that's what I've been working on now because I got tired of freelance. You're all, you have to, you know, if you're like, what happened to me earlier this year before my move was, uh, one of my, my main client, essentially his timelines changed. And so that screwed up my whole everything. Mm. And so that's kind of why things got a little complicated for me. So you have a YouTube channel. Is that correct? Or yeah. you're in like yeah, yeah, yeah. She does. Yeah. I, I subscribed to it today. Yeah. Can we drop the <laughs> link? Can we drop the link for everybody? That yeah, actually the link's in the description if people want to check okay. it out. It's in the description. Cool. Uh, just Thanks. look at yeah, it. If one of you mods you can please, if you're still here, <laughs> could could put that in the link for me. I'd much appreciate it. Uh, yeah, uh, youtube.com slash KaiMFS. And okay. uh, I do a late night show now. on weeknights. Oh, every weeknight or just every, every few weeknights? Or... Yeah, every weeknight. Really? Oh. So Last it's 11... night. Oh. Huh? So 1130 uh, p.m. Uh, Pacific time? Or... 11 p.m. Yeah, 11, 11 p.m. PM Pacific. And I usually you know, I talk about science, psychology, finance, art, video games, anime. I talk about kind of whatever. It's a late night show. And I just go. I have some articles lined up and then I hang out with the chat. Oh. <clears throat> but... um. What's it called? Uh, yesterday, I had uh, the pleasure of having Pete from Creepy Little Book and Purple Valkyrie on to talk about um, the esoteric and the the nature of reality and and all kinds of stuff. It was really fun. It was wow, really sounds cool. Great stream. Well, I I just subbed to your channel, so you got yeah. one. <laughs> so Shadow Bandman <laughs> says, Kai, what city or state are you in? If you want to keep it private, that's okay too. I'm in Southern California in the Inland Empire. Or Orange right. County, but right now I'm in the IE. Okay. Well, great, man. So there's a lot of good business uh, over there. Uh, yeah, if you would, um, yeah, just go ahead and subscribe to Kai MFS channel. He's got a really great channel. You talk about pretty much anything and everything. That's <laughs> that's that's interesting. I did see <laughs> – I see. I saw this one video you had about um, – this one lady uh, who who was in debt and decided how she could cut her her money on certain things to buy, and she actually made it. And she she made it out of her debt, in other words. So mm-hmm. and that was a good segment there. I'm not had a chance to watch another one, but yeah, you have good a good variety of things to talk about. You know, it's some science and art, and uh, actually. Uh, making money on certain things and, and other subjects. So yeah, Kai, you've got a really good channel. You got some good graphics there. Yeah. I, I can actually learn <laughs> learn from Kai and you know, mm. other people are, who have good channels. So yeah. Hey, I want to thank you for coming on, man. Uh, if you want to stick around, we're going to actually do double flyer. Or if, or if you, if you have to go, that's great too. So I'm, I'm glad you came on. Gonna, and, uh, you're going to do, what are you going to do next? We're going to actually promote uh, Devil Flyer. Uh, oh, okay. His, his oh, ash okay, cool. there. If you want to stick yeah, around, that's I'll cool. Stay. All right, cool. I, I'm, I'm going to go AFK for a second and get some more water because I'm out. But, uh, but yeah, I'll stick around. Okay, cool. Awesome. All right. Be so, back. yeah, we're, we're going to – okay. So, we're going to go to Devil Flyer, see if it's actually – we're promoting this thing since last – Two hours. Uh, two hours, I believe. Yeah. Less than two hours now. Less so than it's two It's the hours. final countdown. The, the final Europe. countdown. <laughs> do, 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 do. Yeah. Yesterday, <laughs> as you know, because you came into my show, was yeah. Charlie Chaplin's birthday. Oh, happy birthday, Charlie Chaplin. Yeah. Oh, damn. The day before Easter. Uh he was born in 1889 and would be 133. Happy 133 to Charlie Chaplin, everybody. Woo! I dropped my YouTube uh, link, but uh, yeah, I'll drop the link to the project again, too. Well, it's down below, isn't it? 
Yes, so, uh, your description below yeah. the, the link. Everyone look at the description. If we have some wrenches, some moderators, could please put that in the chat for me. Much appreciated. Devil Flyer, $630, 35 backers. Less than two hours left. Yeah. And let's go and talk about that's your uh you get a one copy of Devil Flyer, black and white for ten dollars. And if mm -hmm. you want more, two copies yeah. of your Ashcan for twenty dollars. And if you want even more, you get five copies of black and white editions for fifty dollars. And if you want even more, you get 10 copies of Black and White Edition for $100. And if you have a big retailer store, a comic book store, or another big bookstore, if you want 20 retailer bundle, you get paid for $200. Yeah. And yeah. actually, you know, I've made it where, uh, you know, cost effective, where it's like when you buy a copy, you're actually going to get two copies. And, uh, with that one copy, of course, you get the zero card and the number one card, and you'll get another set, too. So you'll be getting four cards, but they'll be like two of number zero and two of number one. So not to make it confusing, plus you'll get two books. So when you buy one book, you actually get one free. Same oh, okay. thing with the trading cards. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, so what if you... I buy five Devil Flyers? How many cards will I get? <laughs> Well, I, I just multiply that, you know. So it's 10, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. So yeah. the more you buy, the more cards you get. That's yeah. a pretty good deal, folks. So please uh, check out the Devil Flyer Black and White Edition on Indiegogo. The link's in the description. And, yeah, let's get this baby uh, more than 630 if we can. And let's go ahead and play that trailer one more time. Let's I don't know that Kai saw that. Footage. Just for his benefit. <laughs> now that was one tr uh a trailer uh, by Pedro. Uh, let's see another one called Fembat. You got oh another one, don't you? Oh, Ape my gosh. Apex's yes, own yes. thing. Yes, let's do that. Let's... He's got his own trailer out I there. I do. Let's go and uh, his yeah. sign up's coming soon. Is that right? Or the I've you're going to launch? Yeah, well, I've got to straighten things out. I, I need to get a scanner. Um, some, some of the images I put on Indiegogo looks a little too off kilter and a little. Mm -hmm. I gotta straighten that stuff out. So. Oh, that's that's the big part about it. I mean, the the challenge for these, you know, doing you you just almost, you know, have to have those images the oh way they God. want them and and how many they want, and that's kind of what I've been gathering up so that I can launch the full book, which is yeah. going to be forty eight pages. Oh my God! Anthology with uh, six super uh, no. Not six superhero stories, three superhero <laughs> stories, and three horror stories. So, oh yeah, man. Oh yeah. yeah. Let's see that fin bat. This okay, is gonna, let's do that. Let's go. Ahead. God, this is going to be uh, Apex's uh, book. It's going to be my project on Indiegogo coming up. Um, yeah, I've actually I've finished um, all fifty six pages of story. I'm going to make it a sixty four page. I'm going to add some some different things to it. So let me go awesome. ahead and. Yeah, I'm going to share. Good job on the on that video on that preview there. I love the logo, by the way. It looks freaking sick. That is yeah. A friend logo. a friend of mine did that. He's seventy years old, so you're never wow. too old to get into comics. That is so <laughs> true. That is so true. Let's go ahead and go a little play. And the same guy did this one for right there. Pedro Wang. Yes, 
Fembat yeah. coming very soon, folks, on Indiegogo. I like how he tilted that just slightly, you know, only oh, yeah. on Indiegogo, you know, made it move. Oh, no, that's cool. Yeah, right. Pedro does a great job. I think he's he works with like 16 different uh I, I'm being told that he has like underneath him, he's got like 16 other, um, oh, what would you call them? Animators or whatever. So he's yes. got a whole team down there you know, that he works Pedro, with in, in Panama. Pedro has his own book out. It's, uh, oh, he does. What's it? Oh, yeah, that's right. Tropical uh, Magic. Tropical Magic. So I'm going to look it up and I'm going to play a trailer from him. Yeah, you bet. This for the great Pedro Ang. There we go. There, oh, in fact, I have it right. Here. I remember when he go just ahead. had the early iteration of that, just bits and pieces, you know. And oh, absolutely. Now he's got the whole trailer going on with the music. Yeah, he loves doing these comic okay. book tra trailers for. I mean, he's done a marvelous job. And uh, we're going to go ahead and share. Real quick. Okay, you're going to have to get an Ed McMahon to co-host with you. Yes. <laughs> he, ha ha ha! Hey, Kai. Ha ha. I'm going to sell Alpo on your channel. <laughs> Are you old enough to have uh, watched Johnny Carson, some clips and stuff like that? Am I old enough to watch Johnny Carson? Or or to have seen Johnny Carson when he yeah. was on? Yeah. yeah. Oh, not when he was on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You, you're a young guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm, my age could be deceptive. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Let's play a little bit of a trailer to... Uh, Tropical Magic's Pedro A. Yeah, I love that. Yes, folks, back it on Indiegogo. Yes, absolutely. It's a great project. Look at that handsome guy in the middle. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I couldn't find a graphic of you guys, so I, I, I look at one of your videos. I'm like, okay, I'm going to snap a screenshot. I'm like, I got it just in time with your eyes open. So, okay, I'll be like. <laughs> I, um, I noticed in your tweet, I was like, I went to your tweet to go to the video. I was like, where's the link? There's no link to the YouTube video. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm going to go ahead and share the link here to uh, in the description. Oh, well, where, I'll, I'll do this in the chat, I think. Yeah, let me do that if I can. Yeah, I'm going to share the link. There it is. To, yeah. Paste. Oh, I thought I subscribed already. That's weird. Uh, okay. <laughs> hmm. Did there I subscribe you go. Yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry. This is actually, I forgot to put down. This is a drop. Oh yeah. This is for, Oh God, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> Dropbox. No, it's kid. Okay. This is the link to uh, Pedro Ang's tropical magic. I forgot to put down. I'll do it again. Uh, 72 pages. Page. He's not messing around. It no, looks he like he's penciling, inking, coloring the whole, he's Holy kind of a Michael Bancroft doing it. One man oh. band, isn't it? <laughs> oh damn man. Um put the link in. I'm gonna do this again. Oh sorry. Okay. Yeah. Right now I'm high I'm finding artists. Uh Apex is gonna do uh my Sea Demon story. And uh yeah, I have fun. I have twenty nine pages already complete. 
uh, they they have they need to be colorized, but other than that, it's complete. And uh, pencils and inks and dialogue and uh, the ash can will give you a preview of what uh, will be coming in the forty-eight page comic and uh, just secured hockey from Australia to do a two-page story. His name is Hockey. Hockey, yeah, from Hockey and Alley show. Really? Oh, is, yeah. that, is that on YouTube or is you it... know Hockey? Yeah. No. Uh, okay. I know sport hockey. Uh, I mean, I've seen right. hockey on TV or right, no. right. Yeah. He's an artist. He's a writer and artist, right? Well, you know, Alley, Mistress of the Dark, right? That comes on Vicks from time to time. Vic King. Man, style. I must be living under a rock. Sorry about Rex. <laughs> okay, you've probably been on there with her, Apex. So I'm surprised. Yeah. Um, yeah, she kind of got that Elvira vibe to her. I don't know. Oh, but, uh, okay. Well, I, I don't, maybe I will someday. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, knows? he's, he's, uh, down Australia. He's going to do a couple page story for me. And, uh, I've been talking to doc Blaylock about doing one of the, one of the story. Cause I have about a little, little less than half an issue that I have to secure artists for or draw myself. And I, and I know that I can't do it all by myself. So, yeah. nor nor do people want to just see my artwork. So, Jeez, I've done it by myself since uh, five just years. Co-op different people to do different stories. That's a great thing about the mashup of an anthology. You know, I love keep... to have uh, hire other people to do my other stuff, like lettering, or yeah. coloring, and I, shit. I just do it all. It's like I'm actually, I'm a cartoonist. What can I yeah. say? Yeah. <laughs> sometimes you can't rely on people sometimes they'll be oh i'm i have this other job to go to or i'm married with kids don't have time or whatever they got mm -hmm. going i can't depend on them so i was like i might as well do this all myself and sometimes it ends up being the better doing it yourself anyway yeah well i've I, longer but i can't remember how many trading cards he's already colorized but you know I'm, i'll i'll go be going with that uh uh got trading cards done i've I've had him ink uh i've been working with a gentleman up in canada but now that's just for preliminary and then we'll 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 get somebody for the whole project uh you know i wanted to establish the costume colors and some of the other things and then you know it i had in mind just a black and white comic you know but then mm -hmm. I looked into some colorists and thought, okay, this would be affordable. And I think the project would be better in color anyway. And, but it's been a process, you know, working through these things with a colorist has been very, very daunting, you know, for, yeah. Cause it's like, okay, I want that red. Okay. What red you, you know, what, what shade what of, kind of red do you, you know, want? What kind of red do you want? I mean, it's kind of hard. It's all kinds of red, man. It's to communicate sometimes with Kai, a colorist so kai can you count how many reds do you know of uh <laughs> off your head uh i don't know maybe maybe two or three but i'm not like i'm not great with the uh, keeping track of names in general okay so like i'll meet people and forget their name and forget place names and forget color names and uh yeah. last night we were talking about i was like yosemite Yellowstone, uh, one of those, they're the same, right? They're like next to each other. No, they're in different yeah. states, but I don't know. <laughs> <They're>, <laughs> yeah. I don't care. <laughs> they're right. just, they're, they're, if, they're if, national parks. <laughs> if you're like me, you don't, re I, I'm the same way with names. I don't, you know, retain, not quote useless information, but things that, you know. Not particularly actionable information. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I can get so their what, name again. You so <laughs> are you going to be streaming tonight or have you already streamed your show tonight? No, generally I um, don't the do weekend weekend streams. I, I'm here because I told Apex whenever he uh, we could he wanted to do the stream, I'd join him. Uh -huh. But generally I don't do weekend streams. I try to avoid it and give myself a break for the for the couple a couple days. But I right. just do weeknights. So uh, so Monday, do you have a topic for that yet or nope? Nope. I usually <laughs> I have I um why. articles, yeah. like a document full of articles and links. And um kind of go a through few those. hours before the stream, I'll just pick the ones that I want to talk about that are ones I feel like talking about, and then uh, -huh. uh go from there. Yeah, I'm picking uh markers out of my set. There's di there's different kinds of red, guys. 
I'll show you different <laughs> ones. There's like rose, crimson, actually yeah. red uh, violet. Yeah, yeah. There's red violet, yeah. crimson. Yeah, there's scarlet lake. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and, and when it comes to digital colors, there's even more, isn't there? There's yeah. thousands. Look at this. Okay, here's yeah. uh here's one called it's mahogany red, right? This is oh. a uh, prismacolor mahogany red. Would we that be a, like a brownish red? It's like, like a brownish red, right? Yeah. And we got a uh, a carmine, yeah, carmine red, which is which is a uh, orange an red, orange, yeah, yes. And we have crimson, mm -hmm. right? And we have crimson red, and we have scarlet lake, scarlet lake. So there's different varieties of red. So for sure, yeah, yeah. When you're when you you're talking to a colorist it's like yeah how do you yeah which red do you want i'm like yeah oh, okay and with your when you're red. dealing with lighting you know it's under different circumstances you know is it interior lighting exterior what time oh, of day yeah. is it then you're really dealing with a lot of variables there when you're yes. trying to communicate with another artist on that's something. a lot of work with especially with colors man I mean, I'm finding it was with this colorist. That's why I think I'm going to, this was kind of like a tryout for him. And I think, you know, he does better with the trading card artwork, the single images. So I think I'm going to use him in that capacity right. um, more so than, and get somebody else for the sequential art, you know, for the story art. It's a good idea. That's a good, yeah. I like the distinction. You said that is a thing with this artist <laughs> because the experience really varies from artist to artist. Sometimes yeah. you can just go, you can just tell a guy with an artist what you want, and then they'll come back to you with exactly what you want. You're like, this is it. First yeah. try. Let's see if you can do it again. And they or do it maybe again. Maybe en enhanced and better. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I, and I'm finding, you know, if I continue with him, I think that that with the problems that we've had so far, um that it's it's just going to be a long slog you know i'll be here about this time this year just now getting it you know next year getting it colored you know and i and you know it's on a time thing so uh but now you know i can absorb the cost of you know like six pages that he's colored and and that's a good start for another colorist to look at because now we've established the costume colors and certain things and that can be a, a good jumping off spot for the next colorist. But I'm still going to, and I, you know, I try and do that with the writer, with the stories and that I write it, with the other artists that I work with. I try and play to their strengths, you know. And obviously this guy is better on like single images than he is like sequential art and carrying that through oh, visually. Wow. So, yeah. so I'm trying to play to his strength. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I try and do that with all the, you know, if I see, um, you know, I'm, I, I've not given a hockey, he's not a professional artist, so I'm not, you know, what is a professional artist, but not, I mean, Ours I guess gets one paid. that actually sells his stuff, but, <laughs> yeah. you know, and I'm sure hockey has sold a few things, but, you know, as far as making a living of it 24 yeah. seven, no, it's not Picasso. So, and right. very few people are, but, you know, so I gave him a two page story and he's more than capable, I'm sure, of doing that. And but, you Smart. know, like Vic King, he you he could probably do a whole book for you and fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm playing to other people's strengths. Oh, wow. And 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 my backup stories have to be small, too, because there's only 48 pages and the main story is 29. So there's yeah. nearly 30 pages gone right there. Okay. You know, and I'm going to have six stories. So that leaves, you know, maybe five here, four there, three here, two here, whatever. Yeah. I mean, to make 48. And I'm not just set on that, but I'm trying to, you know, you know, if I can't expand it a few pages, I will. But uh, yeah, for I'm shooting for 48. Yeah. Cool. So, Kai, have you ever uh, drawn a comic book before or put out one? <laughs> Uh, I had a comic book I wanted to do and I have a lot of artist friends and I was like, I wanted to team up with them and do it. And I had it written and, uh, I was trying to get, I was just trying to pitch the idea and they were like, Oh, I don't know. I don't know if I could like 
keep that pace for a monthly release and yada yada. I was like, are you shitting me? <laughs> okay, fuck this. You guys suck. Watch this. I'll do it. I'll do it. I don't even illustrate every day like you guys all do. Watch me do it. And I did. And it wasn't like the best. It was a draft level. But essentially, I got a whole... I got like eight, I think it was even longer than eight. It was like 20 something pages out in a month. Wow. A full comic, but it wasn't colored. It was just uh, illustrated. Yeah. It's, I spooked the sneeze. I spooked like, the like, sneeze. Like, <laughs> like, like uh, storyboarding or, or like uh, thumbnail. Well, I just did it on eight and a half by 11 uh, uh-huh. pages. So I thumbnailed it first. And that's another thing. I was, they were like, oh, but you know, I have to do the layout. I was like, I'll do the layouts. I can't write a comic without doing the layouts. Look, I have the thumbnails and everything for the first issue. You can like read it here pretty much. And so they wouldn't even have to figure out layouts. I they just have to, okay, there's the thumbnail. I know what I'm drawing and they could just go. So that's a big time saver. Yeah. But so I said, fine, then I'll just do it. And I did. And I made, I put it together and I, so I had, still have that over here somewhere. Oh, wow. But it's a fantasy wow. story. What's the and, name of uh, it? It's uh, called Beer Fist. Beer, Beer Fist. Fist. I'm a bit it's intrigued a, about this one. It's a it's about a drunk barbarian. Really? Uh, oh, wow. oh. <laughs> called Conan. Do you mind? Do you <laughs> mind? I, is it okay? Do you pull it out. Pull it out. Find uh, it, or is it is it with you? I don't know where it is. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe next time. Uh, whenever. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> but I do have a Who full. Knows? I put it in like a, one of those folders with like a like a clear uh, front and then a little clip on the side. Okay. And yeah. so I drew the cover and you could just flip through it and read the whole thing. I drew little speech bubbles. Like everything's, everything's there. You can read the whole comic. That's awesome. And so that was my pitch. Like, look guys here, I did this in a month. Huh. You guys can do better. And, wow. but uh, still no bites. Everyone was too busy looking to trade their time for money. Yeah, there you go. I'm very impressed that you had the drive and the focus and the passion just to do it. And my respect to you, man. I tell you, that's great. It's really cool. I mean, that's why a lot of people who want to focus on their passions, their project, do like Kai did. He did it himself. He did it. It took him a month to to draw out twenty, uh, write out, draw out twenty plus pages uh, called Beer Fist. I wish it was on Indiegogo. I probably would buy that damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> there you got well, you got me stoked on this thing. Kai. You're on mute. You're on yeah. mute, Kai. Yeah, yeah. I got it. I, if I can find, um, it, it is one of those projects that if I can find an uh, an artist to work with me on it, or if I can put together a team for it, I would consider doing it because it's a cool. really fun. Uh, it's a funny concept. It's a fun comic, and I have a big arc, and I have like his story, his arc is like 12 or 13 issues for the first story and it sets up the world and everything and then i have other characters that branch off from his story and have their own i have so it started off as an exercise when i had kind of writer's block um when i was writing my novel uh i had to design a spaceship like every level of it and uh, I was I was being a lazy bitch is what it was. I was being lazy and I didn't want to do I was like, I have to design a whole shit. Uh, and so I designed a whole universe instead. <laughs> I designed a whole planet in a world with 10,000 years of history, different nations. I created a character. Uh, I figured out my magic systems. And um, then I wrote his I wrote I outlined his story and then I outlined the story of a character that he meets. And then I was like, once I actually had those stories written out and like, okay, like what's the next step? The next step is to make it. Oh, I need wow. to stop working on this and get back to my book. <laughs> so I <laughs> shuffled it all aside, but I've got a couple stories ready to go and I could turn it into a whole like, you know, Marvel universe kind of thing if I wanted to, or if I, yeah. if I had the capacity, but um, it's just not, it's yeah. not in the card. That's too much work. For, that's for a lot of that's where you got to a, a team of, of people to help you do it i know it's hard to do it all yourself yeah i've been doing it for a long time and i got like maybe nine or ten books 
not a story, short story in books and zines and stuff like that. But yeah, I understand, man. That's sometimes to put out a major graphic novel, it could take about three or four years if you're doing it by yourself. That's what took me. <laughs> Plus, on top of that, working full time on a different job on the side and, you know, distractions in life, what have you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it maybe like a few hours a night to work on it every that's night. That's what I do. Yeah, that's what I do. That's what mm -hmm. you have to do. Well, what I was uh, part of when I was making the drawing the comic. Well, like I was doing DoorDash for a while. So I do my lunch shift and then I take like an hour, hour and a half break and then I do dinner shift. And so I'd go to this um, JT Schmitz and I'd have lunch and a beer and I'd, I'd sit there and write. But then I took a break to draw for that month to draw a comic. I forgot what it was like to draw in public. Cause I haven't done it in so long. Yeah. And uh, all of a sudden servers I'd never seen before from the other side of the restaurant were walking by and making sure I was okay. Checking up if I needed anything. Oh, cool. What's that you're working on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd be drawing and all of a sudden, what the hell? Um, yeah. Yeah. No, I'm good. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. If you have a pad and your paper, it, people are like in trade. What's he draw? What is this? Yeah. It's, it's mm -hmm. a good, yeah, it's good, kind of a good way to pick up chicks, too. You know? <laughs> They're into art, and... <laughs> perhaps. That's true. That's true. <laughs> no, I, I've heard that before, actually. It's, I have no people that have used that tactic specifically. They draw the girl that they were after. They would draw yeah. like a still life of them, and yeah. then when the girl came over and talked to them, oh, I'm just an artist. I'm just drawing people here. I was drawing you. <gasps> oh, and then <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> Snag, hook, and line, sinker. There you go, baby. Ah. <laughs> yeah, Bring him to the, you, and then on, when they get there. On uh, Garcia's movie, Mo Digliani, uh, Andy Garcia plays Mo Digliani, the early 20th century painter. And uh, Picasso is in that story as well, in that movie. And they're in the cafe, right? They're having drinks and whatnot. And it kind of comes time for the bill. Well, he pays for the bill with a drawing on the napkin, you know, and hands it to the guy for the drinks and everything of the night. And he says, oh, miss, excuse me, Monsieur uh, uh, Picasso, you did not sign this. And he says, I just want to pay for the drinks, not not buy the whole place. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, if I were only Picasso. That's funny. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Damn, that's pretty cool, man. So anyway, uh, let's go and check up your campaign if anyone has actually backed it. Yeah, uh, bring that thing up. Let's yeah, see if I can. Well, I can go ahead. Yeah, I think it's got less than an hour, and I'm, I'm not even sure how this hour. this might go around. Uh, Kai, we uh, launched this two months ago uh, uh, at like ten, I think, in the in the morning. Uh, it actually gave us over sixty days, I think, like sixty one oh. days. The counter, and and uh, now this going to be the end of it and so it's kind of fitting that i'm on your channel apex because we launched it here you launched there you go and now it's here. gonna crash i mean it's gonna <laughs> crash you know, gonna, want to crash <laughs> the first fantastic four style the was you know? crashed a little bit like ah. crash to be reborn like the phoenix we, from the ashes the phoenix from the ashes there yeah. you go yeah. All right. Well, so, it's it's sitting at six hundred thirty dollars. I guess people are actually sleeping at this time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or at the Waffle House having well, their Easter their too. Binge. I didn't know that it was going to oh, end on Easter when right. I launched Easter. It. So your book ends and Christ has risen. That's how it's going to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we got it. We got it fully funded, and so it's going to go in demand. You know, when the hour's up, and so you know, if you still haven't gotten a copy, like I say, it's going to have trading cards. You'll be able to get the black and white version of number one, and you'll get a special exclusive zero that's going to be black and white too. And uh, really, what's going to turn out to be a twelve card set. Oh. And you know, you know, Fanta. Phantasmagorical. Yes. yes. She's going to do a fan art trading card. Oh, that's awesome, man. That's and, cool. you know, if you want to use your drawing that you did for, you know, Sea Demon, you know, uh -huh. as a card, we can do that. 
Um, yeah, I need to do some more Sea Demon sketches and yeah, uh, and and what I'm well, one of the things I'm going to do about that uh, um, Apex is I'm going to have him as he did with my character Silver Boa. Uh, I think I'm going to have Vic King draw a model sheet for him, and then that way you'll have that to go by. Okay, at all angles, you know. I thought oh. it would make it easier on you. Pl yeah. Plus, I'd like to get model sheets on all my characters done. Yeah, I like to have a model sheet at least so I can yeah. know what I'm doing. So, you know, Vic's uh, worked on several things for me at this point, and uh, we yeah, have plans awesome. to do others, of course. Uh, he doesn't know it, but I'm going to have him do a story within this book uh, coming up, the 48-pager. And nice. then where we go from there, I don't know, but... Uh, and Doc Blaylock, I might get him to do one of the stories. I don't know. I have to see what. Really, Doc what. Blaylock? That'd be sweet, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I know he's going to do a female character for me, and then I, uh, Shelby Robert. Uh, is his Shelby, last name Roberts? Shelby Robertson. Yeah. Robertson. Okay. Yeah. For, that does what? Ninety. What? What's his project? Name? Ninety-four. 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 Yeah. Ninety-four. Okay. Yeah, he's going to do a trading card for me. So, yeah, he looks like Dave Grohl. And, and he's going to do Rogers. my character, Ninjetta, that has uh, swords. Ninjetta. Oh, because I thought he, he does a lot of, you know, his own <laughs> characters had swords. and Oh, hell yeah. Would be good for that. So he's oh, he's going to come on board and do that. So the Damn. more people I can get involved in this that's, you know, within the community, it helps them out and yeah. it helps me out. I was a, com a comic skate star-studded cast of... Uh, of artists that's that's fantastic let's go play this trailer okay shall we appreciate it I, I'm the right, just for Kai's, uh, that is your name, right, Kai? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, Kai. Just, uh, you know, some of us have like Devil Flyer, Apex. <laughs> it's not our real names. No. Uh, but yeah, Kai, <laughs> Kai's uh, name. just for his benefit. Uh, I, I'm the writer on that. My friend that's 70 years old, John Philandes, he's the one that drew that. And he's more of a DC Comics guy, and I'm more of a Marvel Comics guy. So we kind of homogenized pretty well oh, that's um, great do you know apex how do you on the countdown do you know if it's gonna like just stay an hour and then go in demand or i mean i know i already have it set up to go in demand but does it have a counter how do you how do you count that down to like five ten minutes uh you, you know, know? We, we did that last week with uh belmont press on uh smokes the fox how did you see that yeah. I didn't see any counter. <laughs> only, okay. only Belmont Press saw the counter. Okay. I, so I, maybe no, I'll I was see going it. for what he was going, what he was seeing. Okay. Um, uh, Devil Flyer. Uh, so I haven't seen you on other channels uh, promoting the, the campaign. Uh, okay. Have you been around? Yeah. Um, been I've around, been putting I mean? up. I've been putting up. I've got about 100. And I noticed you had 300 and something subscribers. Hey, Lorenzo. Yeah. Um, on Tuesday tired. nights, I'm on topic lists. On Thursdays, I'm on Lorenzo, who just popped in here on his show. And then on um, on uh, Friday, I'm on Red Valkyrie. And then on uh, Saturday, early Sunday morning, I'm here. So, And I have a daily show um, okay. where I show collectibles, uh, art, uh, production artwork. Uh, I used to work for World Color that Marvel used to print their books. Um, and, uh, just rare collectibles and common stuff too, you know, got a extensive, uh, comic book collection, about 30,000. And, uh, um, today we, since it's Charlie Chaplin's birthday yesterday, we celebrated his birthday being 133. So wow. I showed all <laughs> Charlie Chaplin items, you know, different books and things like that. And there's. One. Oh, wait, oh, hold up. Hold up again. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Right. Nice. Charlie, look at that. That's yeah, beautiful. different books. And uh, back here is a uh, city lights. And then this is a bunch of my collective works, you know, box sets oh, and, wow. and things uh, that he's in uh, that I showed today. Uh, he was, uh, this is from the kid, I believe, which made uh, Jackie Coogan a, war, you know, really the highest paid child actor, the first really big child actor in uh, Hollywood. And um, so, yeah, I usually wear this this cap here, got Pez instead of got milk because oh, I, yeah. I show a lot of Pez collectibles. But uh, here's a, Here's an album, Chaplin's Back, that I showed today. Oh, uh, dealing with all his, you know, them performing uh, Chaplin's music from his movies. Because oh, so yesterday cool. was his birthday. Cool. And, um, nice. yeah, but and I have some rare pairs. I, 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 my first comic collection, Burn Up in a Fire, it was arson. Couldn't prove it. But, um, yeah, I, I said, I looked around and I said, what, what is collectible? Um, and so I started collecting Pez. Now this one here is backwards. A Miss Piggy. She's yeah. backwards. Her, feet are, oh her feet are here. Now <laughs> you can't just switch the head around. It's all the inner workings inside oh, of it. That God. is backwards. So you and can't then, get a Pez out of there, huh? Yeah. And then here's Fozzie Bear. Um, yeah. and he's backwards. What uh, the hell? Um, yeah. And I paid back in the day. Oh, probably about a decade ago. Maybe, uh, I paid $40 and $40. So here's 80 bucks right here, oh my but they're gosh. rare. This, this, rare. this, this shouldn't have made it out of the factory, you know? And no. I bought them from a big dealer, um, that said out and they would get them sent loose like this, not packaged up and everything. They said out of all the thousands and thousands of pairs that they had, these were the only two that they'd ever found like this. So I snapped them up. And then there's a, oh, wow. a Thor. There's Thor. Whoa. He's that's pretty a cool neat with Thor, the wings. Man. How yeah. old is that? Oh, you, uh, oh, just a few years old. And the thing of it is, you don't go by dates, you go by patent numbers okay. on these things. Uh, most of them are made in China. There's a very few that's still made in, in Hungary. Uh, and it's usually uh, seasonal stuff like at Valentine's or Easter. Uh, but uh, most of it comes out of China now. Used to, it used to be Hong Kong, uh, Yugoslavia, and then when it changed its name, Slavnia, Austria, mm. all over the place. And, and in the U.S., they made them for two years. And um, they actually had rubber-headed ones. Oh, wow. um, and... Uh, they had like Batman and Joker and they're, they're from the seventies and they're really prized. You know, Thor had one back in the seventies. I've never oh, had yeah. one, but I have had an old seventies uh, Captain America. Oh yeah. Did you read comics, Kyle, growing up a little bit? Um, a little bit. It's more when I got, when during college is when I could, uh, when I got to read more, but uh, mm -hmm. I was more of a Marvel person. Yeah. Okay, I was too. Thank you. <laughs> like, yeah. here's a box regular. That oh, just yeah. looks kind of like a big lighter. Oh wow! And and you at first had to order off from these at the Pez uh, website, and this is a silver one. And they've got a got they have one that's a golden glow that's that's golden or uh, gold that they came out with in 1952. And I have a replica of that that came out 50 years later in 2002, and. um a couple of them actually. I've had three, but I sold one, and I've I've found one recently. So good for me. I'm going to sell it and keep yeah. one for me. But uh, yeah, these uh, box regulars came out. Uh, the first were like bigger. They were came out in 1947. They look like a Zippo lighter. And there's wow. only one known in existence, and it was found in the trash can. <laughs> what? Yeah, there's only one known. Of that original patented 1947, because Pez goes back. Pez is is abbreviated in German for peppermint, and uh, they go back to 1927, and they started the character heads in 1952 in America. Uh, there's some debate on which one it was. Was it Mickey Mouse, or Papa, or Casper? Now the guy from Pez, he was roommates in college with the guy that created Casper. 
So it could have very well been Casper. Mm. And, uh, you know, they had like uh, different molded plastics, you know, like they could have like red blue mix and things. They call that marbleized. And that's that those are rare. And they also had uh, on the stems here, die cut, you know, cut out where you could see the inner workings. And I had some of those, like the Casper one or the Mickey Mouse back in the 60s. They used to do like that in maybe the 70s. Uh, like I say, they don't go by years. They go by patent numbers. And okay. I have a chart about this long that's laminated that that shows, you know, when things were made and what year and era. And uh, it's a fascinating thing. I had some as a kid. I just, after my fire, I said, what is a collect- what is something that's real collectible? And in fact, the internet was partially created for Pez collectors. Huh. Uh, they wanted a an avenue to trade their Pez, you know. So, Devil Flyer, mm-hmm. uh, if I may interrupt really quickly, go ahead. Do you know uh, Tommy of the Guinea Pig Collective? Um, I I I think I subscribe uh, to him to his yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, People- I would. Pardon me. If I were you, I would reach out to Tommy and okay. because he loves collectibles and classic toys and stuff. He loves it. Oh, cool. So, like, if you could bring out your, your Pez and your every, whatever you've got, he would he would love it if you want to do a stream with, with him. it's. I was asking earlier about if I haven't seen you out there. Mm-hmm. Um, and you named the shows that you're on normally. But right. if you want to promote the campaign... Uh, yeah. it'd be best to reach out to places where you're not normally found to expose right. yourself to new people. I, I, I found that to be true. A uh, simple I'll Jack who comes in, uh, he's a gamer and he primarily, you know, when he streams, he games, but I go in there and drop my links and I've gotten a lot of gamers. And then also the toy people, somehow I got noticed by blue harvest and he's got a lot of people over there in the UK. So they're my second largest watchers are from the UK. So when I do uh, my four o'clock shadow show at four o'clock central every day, um, uh, there it's like 10 a.m. or 10 p.m. rather over there in the UK. But they hang with me till about midnight every day. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And here's well, the list. I would, I would say reach out and you can tell Tommy that I recommended that you reach out to him. Um, but yeah. Oh, thank you, you for dropping that, Lorenzo. Thanks, Lorenzo. Wow. Yeah, yeah, go. Lorenzo uh, and, was. And you can reach out to Tommy also on Twitter. Uh, he's he's pretty active on there, if I remember. I right. will. Okay. But yeah, uh, I'll make sure that. Tommy. Yeah, I think he's been recommended to me. Dark Gift Comics. Thanks for dropping by. What's up? What's up with this? Hey, Anthony. Anthony. What's Anthony. up? All right. We're just closing out my campaign here real quick. <laughs> uh, I think we've got a few minutes left. Do we? Ah, I don't okay. know. It's it's the final countdown. It's coming. The final <laughs> countdown. <laughs> but yeah, I, I would like to see you uh, reaching out. See you on some new channels that you uh, maybe haven't been on before. Talk yeah. to Tommy. You know, bring out your collectibles, stuff like that. You've got uh, yes. You've got stuff other people would like to talk to you about. So um, I put yeah. uh, I encourage you to put yourself out there a little more. Hey man, get your campaign funded. Uh, well, I am subscribed to him. Uh, I haven't contacted him but i will uh he's been recommended to me before that's why i'm subscribed to him and and i do get his notifications i don't always get in there when he's streaming but i'll make that a priority to get on his show and and uh talk uh collectibles i'd really like dark to do gifts comics presents agrees tommy is a good peeps Simple Jack <laughs> streaming now. One of wishes to open the extra tab in their browser and say hi to him at this link right here. And Dark Gift says, yeah, Tommy's a big into collectibles. And Renzo says, hey, Anthony. <laughs> so, yeah, we got a good, good. It seems like we're about to <clears throat> wind down. There's people coming in. We're going actually, yeah, and- we're going to stay on until this campaign goes <laughs> down to zero. So I will right. stay up late with you guys. It's, it's worth it. <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe uh, maybe you oh, can drop okay. maybe you can drop the link to da- Dark Gift if Anthony will come in here a minute. Maybe yeah. He'll... Hey, Lorenzo, can you also uh, find uh, Kai's link as well to promote his channel since he's here, get some more subscribers. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. yeah subscribe. Uh, uh, Anthony, let me go ahead and drop. If you want to come on, let me drop you a link, man. The reason uh, I ask you, Anthony, is uh, I'm wondering about the counter. You know, on the the on the time here 
And I know you've got experience, I think, with yeah. the campaign. So let me go ahead and uh, put that. In. And you're an all around cool cat. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. I put in the stream on you, like, Cassie, if you want to come on in. It's That'd a potty potty weekend. It's, it's Easter. Potty. Hey. Yeah. It's a potty. I can't imagine can anybody having any other plans on Easter. I know. <laughs> so now watching a campaign go down to zero. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just thought it was fortuitous that, uh, you know, I launched it here on your program and it's wrapping up on your program. Okay, so if you're East Coast, still in at 3 a.m. So we're actually Central, so we'll end at 2 a.m. So we can, in the next 20 minutes, it's going to end. So, all right. Okay, is that how you kind of gauge it, that it's going to be, I, somebody had said 3 a.m. and That's East Coast time. Yeah, so that's what I just. Anthony said. Okay. Oh, also, I just subbed to Kai's channel, uh, YouTube.com, there's Kai MFS. All right, thanks, Lorenzo. I'm sure... Okay, yeah, I, I picked up that. subscribers like that. I go over to Simple Jack and get some of the gamers. Yeah. And then I go on like the UK, you know, Blue Harvest and they they talk toys and I pick up subscribers there. So I've gotten some cross pollination through people that just don't deal with comics, you know. Yeah. For my channel. Yeah, that's what I do with some of uh, the uh I I stream with uh some people uh from on the Twitter, uh, actually, Lynn Gay Storm, uh, Death by Saber, uh, Dakota Falls, and of course, uh, Smoke and Wraith. You and I know Smoke and Wraith, right? So, like every uh, sometimes every Monday or Tuesday, I'm on there, and also on uh, actually Lynn Gay Storm's channel, she's on on Wednesdays. So, I, I wasn't there last week, I, I had some artwork to, to actually do. Still working on doing a three-point perspective. Mm -hmm. Captain USA flying over Ooh. some buildings. It, it's buildings, time. man. Yeah, it's, buildings takes a buildings are kind of a bitch to draw, but especially three-point perspective. I got my three perspective points lined up, and it's on it's on a tilting uh, Dutch angle. It looks kind of cool, but once I get that. It's almost all pencil. Does got to ink the thing, put some layers to it. Anthony says Indiegogo that? is West Coast, so midnight Pacific. It'll end, so adjust according to your time zone. Have you right. seen uh, Wesley Willis's like four, five, six point perspective? His like crazy perspective drawings. No, was he on his own channel? Oh, no, he's dead. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. There he went his died. promotion. <laughs> yeah. He died a long yeah. time ago. He died, uh, I think, when I was in high school still. So before 2004. He used to, have you have you ever heard that song? Rock and roll McDonald's. Yes. Or yes, I have. Johnny Is Dad. that him? Yep, that's him. He What's also, he, he had, oh. um, he, he was uh, on the spectrum. But he would, so he would make his songs of, of those of like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Atlantis Morissette of just like people that he adored. And and other random stuff, uh, with like the, practically the same keyboard beat every time, but he would also do these incredible multi-point perspective drawings. Holy uh, mackerel! We should look that up sometime. <clears throat> Lorenzo said cool. uh, he died in two thousand three. And ah, there we go. And Wesley, Thanks, what's his last name? Wesley. Wesley Willis. Wesley Willis. Okay. Yeah, great Write superhero name. Yeah, man. I've I had this rock and roll McDonald's in my head like a longest time. So Wesley Willis, that was his fault to actually write and perform that song. Thanks, Wesley Willis. God rest your soul. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Two thousand three. Wow. Peace, Wesley. He probably wasn't very old either, huh? Probably not. No. I, it didn't sound like it. He was he was actually getting pretty popular for because his music was just wacky and his art was amazing. That's and cool. He died. I, don't on, know how, uh, but... uh, I should say a week from now, Pops Van Zant, I will be starting a new show over there. Uh <clears throat> on well, I guess it's uh the weekend. Okay. <clears throat> and uh Dave will be showing from the UK, he'll be showing some things. I think we're gonna talk about Jack Kirby first, and then uh like Joe Kubert and John Basima and following weeks, and then just you know, showing different things that they did 
Um, oh, wow. You know, he's going to show some things that he has in his collection. I'm going to show some things for about 30 minutes. We're going to kind of trade, you know, showing things off. Well, that's a good idea, man. Yeah. So that's a new show that Pops wanted to start. And I said, sure, I'm up for it if he is. Yeah. Because he has a vast collection and I've got a vast collection. So he wanted to kind of get us together the best of both worlds. U.S. versus U.K. <laughs> <laughs> Again. Well, uh, so, it's been fun hanging out with you guys, but I got to get uh, moving. Okay. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming on, Kai. Have All a right. great Easter. All right. Take care, man. Right. Great, Good luck on the great to meet you. Uh, and I hope to see you around on more channels, uh, Devil Flare. You bet. We're all, all right. going to get out there. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, Take Kai. Take care, y'all. Take care. Have a good one, too. All right. And we would really like to is. present. Thanks, first time Dark Gift Comics. Welcome, sir. Welcome, welcome. How you what's doing? Up, what's, what's up? up? How you guys doing? Oh, I got my reverb on. Oh, yeah. Sorry about, so, sorry about that. Like I was just recording moments. music. So. <laughs> There's uh, Anthony with his gay life. I've never met Anthony. Hey, Anthony. <laughs> nice there. to meet How you, man. It's it's nice to you. meet you, Dan. Yeah, yeah. Hey, right. uh, I, know we, I know we follow each other, but we've never actually like met. You know? Yeah, finally. Hey, I'm glad yeah. you came on. Cool. And I miss on, Kai. Man. I haven't seen Kai in like God. It's got to be like a year since and last man, time. He's I was just dropped up. Kai. Just when you come on. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Sorry. Uh, uh, what's oh, going well, on, bro? He, yeah, he sees me in the chat. What's going on, man? It's been a while. You, you need to uh, subscribe to his channel. Then you can see him every day. Yeah, there you I, go. I am That's subscribed to his channel. I, oh, I okay. am. I, am. I yeah, subscribed I just, today. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So, uh, no, he's a cool dude. Uh, he, uh, he has cool. Last time I spoke with him, I think he had just wrote a book, I think. Yeah. I think he just wrote a book. Yeah. And he was uh, selling it or whatever. Um, like an actual book, not a comic book. Uh, right. right. Like a novel. Yeah, like, oh. yeah. yeah. Um, cool. Uh, but yeah, yeah, no, I figured I'd, I'd pop on. Yeah. Uh, um, so if this is your last day, it probably still says like you have an hour left. But One hour. Yeah. Yeah. You got 10 minutes is really what you have. Yeah. Right. But yeah. you know, Belmont was on with it. Belmont press, you know, smokes the Fox Yeah. last week. And yeah. he had, he was going, we got five minutes left. We got three minutes left. He now, where's he seeing that Anthony? Do you know? He was probably just looking at his watch. Okay. His, oh, okay. Yeah. Cause they yeah, all end at 3 a.m. Yeah, they always midnight Pacific, whatever the day is. So, yeah, uh, yeah, like I'm East Coast, so my my campaigns will always end at three a.m. So, like we launched it on Apex's two months ago. Can you believe right. that? And that's cool. But we launched right. it like ten a.m. And when I launched it, I had sixty one days, right? And I right. guess that's why because we launched it so early. Yeah, uh, two months ago. Yeah, because you also have daylight savings in there. Yeah, yeah, you did. I didn't think about that. Wow. Oh no, was daylight savings over already? Today's the <sighs> today's the sixteenth. It yeah. happened and did it happen in March? I think right. It yeah, did, was, but it happened okay. on the thirteenth because that was my birthday. Yeah, yeah. So, so we launched. It oh, we launched on your birthday. Oh, 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 oh really? February. You launched in February. February oh no, yeah. so then you yeah. So then you had you had. Uh, daylight savings in there that's yeah that's and what probably saying. what happened was um so but your birthday's march right march 13th 13th yeah, yeah, right yeah. yeah okay yeah march 16th yeah. Uh, cool. oh there yeah, you there's go. a lot of march march people <laughs> manticore and uh who else there was oh tank that's i think they're, march they're on the same day like the 29th <laughs> dang man Oh, CG March babies. How about Synchronicity. that? Synchronicity. Yeah. <laughs> oh, a lot. Yeah, so, so, as far, as far, so as far as I horoscope? know. What is March? Is it? Uh, uh, Pisces, Pisces and then oh, Aquarius Pisces. is Art. after. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh right. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of. Yeah. A fish. Yeah. I'm like That's Scorpio funny. and Sagittarius. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there you go. <laughs> yeah. But the beginning part's the best part. That's the Pisces. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, somebody was <laughs> talking the, the other day that uh, in March, uh, I guess, uh, Frank Miller's birthday. I'm oh, like, oh, March what? Yeah. What's his birthday? I, I can't remember, but it was in March, I think. And, and, and I said, because I had mentioned that I was born on November 2nd, and that's Steve Ditko's birthday. Damn, I forgot to send Frank Miller a card. Damn it. 
No. Yeah, Frank Miller's <laughs> birthday. I think EBS's son's birthday is the March 13th. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, that's Same cool. Same yeah. That's wow. cool. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, 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 how about that? And my friend that lives out that yeah, we've been, you know, for like 30 years or more. Uh, he's he's in March, and and my father's birthday was in March. So, hey, uh, Lorenzo uh, has a, March, a memory people. of of uh, Wesley Willis. I hung out with Wesley Willis for a few hours at a small recording studio. It was in Livonia, Michigan, near Detroit, if I remember correctly. They continues. From what I recall, Wesley Willis would greet a person by gently bumping foreheads and would say, Rawr! Who's Wesley Willis? Okay, Wesley Willis, uh, have you heard the song called Rock and Roll McDonald's? Rock and Roll McDonald's. Yeah. It's on the, yeah, uh, that one video of that, um, uh, it's a movie, uh, Super Size Me. Would you like yeah. fries with that? Oh, yeah. okay. Super Size yeah, Me. Super uh, Size Me, yeah. Who's that guy? The, oh, I can't think of his name that did the, he yeah, only yeah, ate I, mcdonald's yeah for, for, for 30 like days a, he ate mcdonald's yeah. and how much weight he gained all that sugar and fat that he consumed from those yeah. mcdonald's products it really depends has, on how much and how i mean you know you know if you get like two instead of one or what size and you know i can't uh, resist uh, uh the uh well, yeah, he, actually, Burger King, but the frozen cokes. Yeah, the Wesley Wills is also an amazing was an amazing artist. He did a six point perspective on some of his drawings, and also wrote really weird songs. And uh, Lorenzo Cislak says, "I kick Batman's ass" was another song of his. <laughs> I've yet to listen to that. <laughs> I'm intrigued. A, I'm about to look joker. it up. Yeah, I've got to look it up. He died in 2003, unfortunately. He was, he was young. I don't know how old he was. But. So how's the CromCon stuff coming? How's the yeah, Crom how's project that? coming, Anthony? Uh, going good. Going good. Uh, we've got 39, 38 days left. Uh, we're 25% there. Yeah. Uh, most of the, most of the uh, pages are coming in on time. Um, and... Do you have a campaign on your screen, or do you want me to pull it up for you? Uh, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't have it up because I got all okay. my, uh, okay, I'll go pull up for it. Did, did you hear what I said that next week I'll be start and I was down for it to be tomorrow or actually today, but it was Easter and they said, well, okay, let's put it back a week. So, so what's, what's the name of this, uh, campaign? It... Enter the Cromniverse. Okay. Ooh, enter. okay. enter the Cromniverse. Enter. Okay. Lorenzo out in the uh he was actually my first backer on my book. Oh, Lorenzo's yeah. good people. Lorenzo's good. good. He's, like he's, so he's, so he's cool. OG. He is OG. Yeah. He's been around since God forever. Well, he is a lizard. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Lizards <laughs> do last long. <laughs> this is true. It's like a crocodile, he never dies. Yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> That's really wild. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and share this. Screen. I'm gonna have to make a black light poster just so that you can have one, Anthony. You know, God, I need one too. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, that's a oh, beautiful yeah. idea. That's I, yeah. Maybe that's, I, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, that that's like my like my my staple. Every campaign I'm involved in, I do a black light tapestry. Oh, really? that's cool. Yeah. I, I'm gonna have to come up with a uh, with a freaking uh, fembat. Uh, black like poster uh that's an idea oh yeah <laughs> yeah your cut your character would lend good to that and she's a vampire so and the yes. lights are out and yeah that would be great man i'm about to hire a uh, dark <laughs> the comics related madness presents Enter the Chronicles, an anthology featuring a little brief dude with a bear. Yeah, listen, it's me, Crown, the world's first real-life internet troll. So there's a whole gang of creators making an anthology starring yours truly. We're talking 15 creators, 13 stories, another 8 folks creating merchandise, all for your entertainment. Indiegogo is the place you want to go to back this glorious project. This anthology features my lovable self crossing over in today's best independent comic books and graphic novels, causing chaos everywhere I go. In addition, we're going to be offering 
custom painted shoes, black light tapestries, sketch cards, alternate covers, adorable crocheted mini me's, original art, and sculptures. Uh, anyway, back at today, only on Indiegogo. <laughs> yeah, now who, Anthony, who did the, uh, the sculpture? Jim O'Reilly's doing it. Yeah, that was just oh, a. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that was a uh, sample piece. That that was his pit that he did. Actually, I think he just sold that today on Don Jim's channel. Sold it today. I watched yeah. the sale. Yeah, with the chains and everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but he's uh, going to be doing Hawk one Max of Crom. Bought it. Shadowhawk Max bought it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, Had a good price. What you call it? Carsey. Yeah, he, he's gonna do a Crom uh, scu bus sculpture uh, for it. The the crochet, um, the hand crocheted uh, plushies already sold out. They're we sold out. Five you of had those. five wow. of those, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, so when it cool. says blacklight tapestries, what it, what does it quite mean by tapestry? It's okay. Well, it doesn't get so it's cloth. <laughs> It's cloth. Oh, there's some cloth. right there. Oh my god, that's it. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it's so like it's the old school ones you had back in the day. Like I used to have like all my music ones up on the ceiling like that. Holy crap, that's yeah. awesome! Wow. So are those cloth as well? Yeah, those are from okay. my hunting Alice campaign. Uh, those okay. were the first ones I did. Okay. That one over oh. there on the ceiling, and that one is for Lightbringer for Liz and Vic the, mm -hmm. that I'm publishing. Oh, yeah. And that, that one's there is for Crom, and we're gonna we we're gonna do one for Doc for because uh, I'll be publishing Pariah, so we're gonna do one for uh, Doc's campaign also. Oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Hey, Dave. Yeah. Dave from the yeah. Netherlands is in. I'm here. gonna grab something to drink, and while I do. Okay. I will. Uh, I have my. Uh, I still have my music ones that I took down, so I could put those up. I got to put them up on this side of the room, and I'll okay. show you. Like it's like the old school, you know, band tapestries yeah. that you used to get. Oh uh, hell I'll yeah! Be right back. Okay. Oh yeah, man. That's cool. Dave, I'm glad you made it in here. We're like three Dave, minutes from closing Dave. my campaign. So. Genuine Comics. Hey, hey, Dave. How you doing? Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Say, hey, Genuine mm -hmm. Comics. Hey. Yeah, black light matter. Black lights do matter. You know what they do. <laughs> black lights matter. Black yeah. lights matter, everybody. Yeah. All right, absolutely. Are, are you driving your mother to church tomorrow for Easter? Well, you know, actually, she's made a dish to go there Sunday morning before church. Oh. I'm not going to make it out there. I'm, oh. I'm possibly will make it out there uh, to church. So, so they're going to have like a potluck tomorrow? Yeah, like a pot. Well, it's a potluck brunch before the service. Well, That's early for me. Have I'm her, thinking... you know, bring you something back. Wait, I don't you know, mean to interrupt. Uh, yeah. Rex, do you plan on going into man? Yes. Did you, did, you, did, you, did, you, did you check the button? Yes. Not... I mean, I did ahead of time, right? You checked the box. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make yeah, sure. Not recently. <laughs> some people, yeah, some okay. people forget. Yeah. yeah, they do. They're like, oh, it's over. Crap. Oh, yeah. I'll wear the back end. Too late now. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm going to pull a John Malin. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Just 60 days. It's gone, baby. I'm going to burn the rest of my books. <laughs> Yeah, he forgot Damn. to uh, he forgot to uh, extend. That was what yeah. he did. He forgot That's to extend did, from yeah. thirty yeah. to sixty. Uh, but he also, he call up. you know, he never goes in demand. So no, That's he what never I mean does. It too. You yeah. got one minute, brother. It, it says one, one hour left. Minute. Yeah, I just wondered. <laughs> Damn. And then Thanks it'll just click on over, huh? Yeah, if it'll just you switch. check the box, which I did. Yeah. See the don't panic button. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's too bad that you don't get some kind of counter to go by on these things. I like to see a clock or something. <laughs> they need one. I, I think Kickstarter has one. Oh, uh, really? But okay. yeah, like these are like the old oh, school. Oh, uh, yeah, Doors. Uh, yeah, I love Jim the Doors. Morrison. It's one of my favorite bands from the '60s. Oh hell yeah! yeah. Oh, but yeah. like you see how like like the the old the old ones are, like they're so cheap. Like they're thin. Like they get holes in them and stuff because it's very thin. Uh -huh. yeah. These are nice and thick, uh -huh. and they have grommets in the corners, so you, oh, you can just cool. put put push pins in them, and it doesn't yeah. tear. Yeah. Like, so, so when designing the color, um, 
Do you use colored inks or how how uh, do you do that? It, it's three a.m. Yeah, oh. it's three. Uh, yeah, Devil Flyer, uh, Genuine Comics. That's what's it's closing. Uh, if you, but it's going to in demand. So if you would like to go to Indiegogo, if you would please. Hey, uh, it's in demand. All it's right, in demand. So me... glad I checked that box. <laughs> so yeah. Lorenzo, if you glad I got funded for <laughs> Devil Flyer, if you would please, that'd be great. Uh, the yeah. the colors, yeah. You you you, you want to like well, for hunting Alice, the colors just worked out. Like that's what like made like uh, Matt Kratz did the colors for the cover that I drew. This one. Oh yeah. And, and he was going for like an electric psychedelic thing because that's what I was trying to go for. Right. And and uh, I was like, I got to do a blacklight poster, mm -hmm. and I wanted yeah. to do one like the Salamandroid one over there, like it, the, with the felt on it, what they call flocking. And I couldn't right. find anybody who did that. And I kept, I found this company who did tapestries and I was like, oh, no shit. And, uh, I used to have some paper, uh, flock paper ones as a kid in the seventies. Yeah. How does yeah, one yeah. design a black light poster? And, how, and you would get, you and that? you would get those at like the carnival, Yeah, you know, or yeah, something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I wanted. The pay, like the Salamandroid one is a uh, paper with the flocking on it. Oh, okay. Uh, which is the felt, you know? And oh, I, I didn't know find that. It. I, I ordered one and I got it, but it's still in the tube. <laughs> so I've not even checked on yeah. it. Never even opened it up. Yeah, yeah so I, I couldn't find a place that did them. So I found this place that does the tapestries. And it's, I mean, you could do any size you want. I do 24 by 36 because it's perfect for like a comic book cover. It's mm -hmm. like a regular poster size, you know? So that's the size of that Salamandroid, right? 24 by 36? Yeah. Yeah, but, like 24 but by 36. Like, but Anthony, kind of like a 3D comic, um, you have to have specific colors for it to pop to be 3D, like red and blue, whatever. What 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 are the colors that really pop for black light? You just want to make sure you have like the most brightest, uh, as close to neon colors as you can get somewhere in it. Um, yeah. And uh, so like... So they kind of glow, don't they? When they're yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like it's hard to see on camera, but yeah, like right. the like skeletal the, uh, hands there, like the yeah, like the yellow up there is glowing. Uh -huh. The there's green oh. in the eyes. The green on her shirt is glowing. Uh, wow. Same thing with Crom. Oh, I can see the green eyes from here. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, man. And then if you look. Like, obviously the red pops on that one and then uh -huh. the gr the green and reds on that one pop but like it's a little bit in shadow right now because the lights aren't directly hitting it yeah. but like th that uh, uh, you're getting a glare up from the from the black light there but like uh, the yellows in that one over there pop out uh purples uh purples reds greens yellows hey, yeah those, those are the colors that you want you know blue will get blue like depending on what kind of blue uh might might um just flatten out you it'd know? be pretty neat to have like your character on top of like a uh tie-dye type background oh, yeah right. you could do that you could do that um and and like you know you don't always have to change your artwork like if your color if your cover has like a, a more duller tone to it and you still want it to be black light you could just re-highlight it um keeping the same color palette just brighten some of the colors mm -hmm. and um and then it'll and then have it pop you know for the black light and still have like that tone you were going for for the book you know um but you don't have to do black light you could just do regular tapestries you know what i mean like but i like the black light one so I, i've seen I, a lot i think they print like that stuff uh, like the flocked ones maybe on like black and then they put the colors over the black yeah yeah okay. and the thing is they can get messy like uh if you keep if you rub your hand on it like oh yeah it, yeah yeah it'll come <laughs> off yeah and you're oh, saying wow. that's how salamandroid was yeah that's why i saw i put salamandroid in a frame so yeah yeah i need a frame definitely so it's a 24 by 36 frame you, is it custom framed do you uh... no i went to michael's and uh got like their cheapest one that they had and it's like oh. i mean it is kind of cheap i had to like put some tape on the back to, i mean because like you have a michael's yeah i got <laughs> yeah. michael's we don't have a michael's i do in my town so i'm going yeah. there and get it framed yeah 
And uh, yeah, my uh, my uh, friend uh, that uh, lives uh, over in Jackson, Tennessee, they used to have a Michaels years <sighs> ago, but they closed. So, and they and they've got like two hundred thousand people in Jackson. So or, back, or, back or in the more. day, Michaels was uh, Leewards, and I, I worked really? there. I didn't know yeah. that. Michaels uh. bought out all the Leewards arts and crafts, and I uh, no when idea. I was seven, I think I was seventeen when I worked there, and uh, I was like the only dude. And, um, so I had to like do the sweeping and all the cleaning, you know, while the ladies just do mm -hmm. all the organizing. And while I was sweeping, I'd go down the art aisle and I would just like, oh, I need a new, uh, you know, cyan blue for my, cause I was, I painted back then and I would just, yeah. <laughs> just pocket a bunch <laughs> of shit, <laughs> walk out the door. <laughs> No wonder That's why Leverage great. went out of business. There's probably like a hundred thousand of me. We lost a lot of tubes of paint. Where the hell did it go? Oh, yeah. paint brushes, all of it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah you poor find... thing, having to work. We'll let's let's face too. it: the women are better organizers. Yeah, they're multitaskers. You know, I'm unless the, you find very few men that are meticulously clean freaks. Oh, not me. Yeah, my my artist John Philandes, he he uh he's a clean freak, you know, or he keeps a tidy house. Let's put it that way. I clean when I need to. So. Yeah. <laughs> Anthony, you got a damn good, cool studio, man. So, uh, what color paints do you paint the walls? I, actually, they're purple, and I didn't paint them. My old roommate did, and I was gonna paint over it, and then I said, "Ah, fuck it, I'll leave it." So oh, that's pretty cool, man. Dang. Yeah. Yeah, that darker color, you know, with the lights like that really helps it pop. Yeah, it does. <clears throat> yeah. Huh. Uh I'm sending the link to the frame that I got at Michael's. They're pretty cheap. Oh, okay. Uh cool. Ten bucks. You can get right now you can get them for uh ten bucks. Uh really? Hot damn. If uh, if you buy it today, they're ten dollars off. Yeah, I mean, the reason I spent $65 to get the Salamandroid poster, and I'm assuming Apex, you got one as well? I did. I got my, but yeah. two. I bought two of them. Two of them. Wow. Because he said he was only going to make 500 That's of them. That's why I bought two. <laughs> I, yeah, and I bought one of them just for that fact. And, you know, that so many were being returned because of damage. And with flocking, I could tell, you know. Posters are a headache. It just says uh, Anthony's in his den of iniquity. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the other beauty about the tapestries is they fold up and you can literally slip them into like a modern day comic book baggie. Oh, wow. And just wow. stick them right in the Gemini mailer and then you oh, hang yeah. them on the wall and after a couple of weeks, the, the, the wrinkles come out. Like the uh, This is just out. a, kind of like this, where you have like, it's got a stiff board. This is a Art Adams X-Men Oh, uh, unused, you know, it's a t-shirt t-shirt from 1987. Holy mackerel. Yeah. So yeah, kind of like that. You time. could do the tapestry like that. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. They, they come, uh, like they come folded, There's you know, all I have to do is put them in a bag. Mike grill. Which was that? Oh, it's green arrow. Longbow. Oh, longbow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. longbow hunters. Uh, is this yeah, the green, you know, green arrow, green arrow, yeah, the longbow prestige oh, format are, book oh, that came this, out. Sorry. I love the Mike Gross stuff, yeah. man. so good. Uh, graphics did that or whatever, yeah, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. but oh, oh, okay, those yeah. guys because that's the one thing, right? With posters, either you fold them up and they have creases in them forever, or you have to, uh, if you're the person selling them, you got to buy the tubes and have extra shipping costs, you know, right, yeah, but, right. But and, with the tapestries, you stick them right in the Gemini mailer with the But book. everybody complains, Anthony, about, okay, they did a poster, but it, it was a mini poster and it was folded in half. They want, right. and, and they do uh, want big posters, big but let's face it, posters. how many, I mean, I've got posters and actually bought extra posters just to resell and keep them in the tubes uh, on my eBay store, but uh, uh, they're, you've only got so much wall space. Let's face it. Right. But I mean, do people do like full size posters with campaigns? They they hate yeah. the folded stuff. Right. Yeah, because it comes creased. Right. Like that's yeah. like. Yep. You know. That's what, you what I'm hearing at that point. All the yeah. time is I. It came with a poster, but I, I it's creased and. You yeah, know, that's just why. To I fit did in with the, the Gemini mailer. 
with Hunting Alice, I did postcard prints. You know what I mean? Like, I, And a lot I of people like, have went to those prints. And I think it's because, you know, they don't, they want to do something like that imagery for the campaign, but they, you know, don't want to fold the poster has to fit within that Gemini <laughs> Miller. So there's got to yeah. be another way. Yeah. Like you say, and with that, a tapestry, you could, and actually that's good padding, right? For your book and other things. Yeah. 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 And, um, what's your call it? Yeah. Like I said, like just fold up, stick it in the Gemini Mailer yeah. and, and, uh, it's one less shipping item you have to worry about. It's one less, uh, um, uh, headache because you don't have to fold the damn poster. Like they come folded already pre-folded. All I got to oh, do is stick yeah. them in a bag. Yeah. That's so, sweet. yeah. How much does it cost to produce a black light poster? Well, uh, the posters, I don't know, but the tapestries, I go through a company that's good for like small creators mm -hmm. who only have like maybe a hundred or 200 backers, mm -hmm. you know, because they don't do bulk rates, but I got in with the guys and, um, I became one of their affiliates. So I get like a massive discount on their website. Um, so what's the name of the company? I'm not saying. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to keep that. I'm going to keep that on the wraps for, for at least another year. And then I'll show right. it I, after I have a couple of kids, after I'm known for the, as the tapestry guy, like I want to be the guy that's known as the tapestry. I guy guess first. I'll get it through you then. Is that okay? I could do that. I could do okay. that for you. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. um, yeah. And I've got a project that I was thinking about. You know, it's it's a different format for a comic, but now I'm also thinking that would be great for a tapestry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, but so th since they don't do bulk ratings, you, if you get in with the affiliate program, you, like I said, you get a massive discount. So, and, and it's the same price whether you buy one or a hundred, right? So uh, basically where you're going to save your money is really going to be being a part of the affiliate program and on the shipping. Because shipping for you know one is going to cost you ten bucks, but shipping for fifty is going to cost you fourteen, right? So you, yeah. your shipping cost just you know to get it to you just went from, um, you know nine dollars a unit to a dollar twenty five a unit, you know. So and, and uh, with so that that's being what... flexible, you're not unless it's just some factory error, like it it was a, a rip, a tear, or so, so, something that was actually replaceable. Uh, it's not an easily damaged item. Right. Right. Yeah. It would yeah. have to really get snagged or like, you know, yeah. run through the muck to get, to get ruined. Um, and then, um, the other would thing there, is there, would there be a limit right? on the length? <sighs> you know, I, do, I, I know they go up to 60 by 60. I don't know oh, if they damn. go, much, if they go bigger than that. Let me see. I'll, I'll double check. Um, that's like a bad but, shit. Yeah, but um, is it that long? Damn. Yeah, that's like a queen. Yeah, <clears throat> that's queen size sheet from head to toe. Sixty yeah. Yeah, queens. I think. Well, I think yeah. queens are technically sixty by eighty. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's like a wow. full size bed, okay. I guess. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. If you're well, still hanging with us when we shut this down, uh, I want to tell you my ideal. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. Okay. Because okay. yeah. I'm wanting to break. I've got a couple different ideals for changing the format of a comic okay well guys uh if you're still with us uh we're going to go ahead and uh say goodbye to the stream uh anyway subscribe to dot gift comics if you would please subscribe to double flyer subscribe to kai mfs and lorenzo sleek stack and uh genuine comics go ahead and subscribe to those wonderful hard-working people and of course, Apex Comics. I uh, sure, please subscribe to me as well. <laughs> subscribe, like, uh, uh, ring bell for notifications, uh, comments, hit, like hit the like button, share videos, all that good stuff, if you would. So we go ahead and say good night to everyone. Uh, good night. Uh, ciao for now. We'll see you in the next video. All right.